Mr. G. Mark Dore, President GPPI France, Mr. Christoph Watcher, Director Flexible Packaging Paper Division, Kohler Paper Germany, Mr. Albert Comexi Group Spain, Dr. Tobin Fisher, Division Manager, Cast Film, Windmuller and Horsher KG Germany, Dr. Christoph, uh, Technical Director, uh, Refn Hauser, Blown Film, GmbH Germany, Dr. Lars Hanke, Business Development, Flexible Packaging, Haber Group, Deutschland, GmbH Germany, Dr. Jörg Peter, Head of Global PSR and Sustainability, Siegewerk, Drug Fabern, AG and Company, KGA Germany, Mr. Toshio Yamaguchi, Senior Counselor at Sales and Marketing Department, Tutani Corporation, Japan. Mr. Lee Sang Kun from Lee Pak, CEO of Lee Pak Company Limited, South Korea. Mr. Jordi Pio, Technical Sales Director, Flexo Printing, Comexi Group, Spain. Uh, Indian speakers, Dr. Tanvir Alam, Director, Indian Institute of Packaging, IIP. Uh, Dr. Madhav Chakrabarti, Joint Director, Indian Institute of Packaging. Dr. Shirayo Savan, President, IP MMI. Mr. Sagar Singh, Member Secretary, CHT Chemical Department, Bureau of Indian Standards, Government of India. Mr. Ashwari Kumar, HOO, Deputy Director, IES, MSME, DI, Jammu, Government of India. Mr. Balveer Singh, General Manager, Chandigarh Regional Office, SIDBI, Small Industries Development Bank of India. Mr. P. N. Sridhar, DGM, Sustainable Products and Packaging, ITC Limited. Dr. Rajeshwar Mache, Head Packaging, CSIR, Central Food Technology Research Institute, Ministry of Science and Technology, Government of India. Mr. Rocky Langu, uh, Syntagon Technology, GmbH. Mr. R. Ramanathan, CEO and Director, Pale Global Technologies, Private Limited. Mr. Nagesh Bakshi, CMD Bakshi Mark, Private Limited. My colleagues, Mr. Saket Bhatia, Chair, PIG, CCI, National Packaging Committee, and President Hindustan Tin Works Limited, Mr. Jeevaraj Pillay, Co-Chair PAG CCI Packaging Committee and Joint President Packaging and New Drug Development, UFLEX Limited, Mr. Subodh Gupta, Co-Chair PAG CCI Packaging Committee and MD Terrasol Polymers Private Limited, Mr. Ajit Gupta, Co-Chair PAG CCI Packaging Committee and Director Ajit Industries Private Limited. And I welcome all the attendees, those are participating through our online portal and YouTube. Today we have participants not only from India, but also from several other countries as well in the virtual conference. Recently due to the COVID-19 pandemic, Continue, sir. Yeah, COVID-19, uh, recently due to COVID-19 pandemic, the consumers are more health conscious and looking for hygiene, safety features. There is global concern for the environment as well. In view of this demand, there is huge scope of innovation and new technology in food packaging. The numerous packaging converters are developing new, innovative monopolymer, fully recyclable, flexible packaging laminates for food packaging sector. In case of sustainability, we will also witness continue transition from plastic to paper flexible packaging. Plastic provides significant benefits of barrier function functionality, delivering resistance to gases, moisture, light, and aroma where needed. But for certain packaging, such as confectionery packs, paper is more sustainable, and brands also find it more appropriate in terms of environmental concerns. I'm sure the deliberations uh, during the two-day international conference on food packaging will benefit the industry and all of us. Friends, I once again welcome you all. Thank you and stay safe. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, now I invite uh, Mr. Jeevraj Pillay. Mr. Jeevraj Pillay is uh, co-chairman of uh, PhD CCI National Expert Committee, and he is also joint president of packaging and new product development in Uflex Limited. He is mechanical engineer and an MBA. He has over 35 years of experience 
of packaging covering the entire gamut of packaging technology from pre press to cylinder making different types of grades of film making to high end conversion of flexible packaging material his skill include sound understanding of web handling extrusion and coating technology and bag making for varied applications he has been actively involved in the development of viable biodegradable options for the packaging industry including that under litter conditions as well his contribution in implementing the energy curing technology in flexible packaging has resulted in a substantial reduction of carbon footprint as well mr jeevraj pillai please good afternoon everyone uh, i welcome you all to this uh, exciting session today it is indeed very heartening to see the level of participation today and my sincere thanks to everyone we have some great speakers today on this platform i was just going through the list and i find some great speakers we shall greatly benefit from the collective experience of the speakers we have today the food packaging industry is enjoying a healthy growth rate but is also ridden with constant challenges in fact the advancement in this sector has largely been the result of the industry's attempt to take the challenges head on if you see the decade before this the challenges were mainly on account of cost pressures demand to improve line productivities accelerated volumes and other supply chain variables food safety was a prime focus area global and specific migration limits were redefined and many ingredients used in packaging were moved to restricted lists most advancements hence largely focused on product and business reengineering things have changed today's challenges are of a different kind and nature the industry is under pressure to make packaging more and more sustainable pressure from environmentalist groups lobbyists and consumers have pushed the food processing industry to relook at the current product portfolio and propose changes to it to make it more sustainable sustainability guidelines from the government on epr and pw rules have already been published and on on an immediate compliance basis fssai has also taken the responsibility of an enabler in helping the implementation of key recycling requirements proposed in the plastic management rules if you look at the trend and recent technological advancement in food packaging most have been directed towards providing sustainable packaging solutions and today's topics have been selected to provide heads up to the packaging industry on the readiness to accept the defined course all in all the industry has taken it upon itself to develop more sustainable structures packaging material structures using more and more recycled contents using biodegradable materials and using recyclable polymers will be the new advancements in the short to medium term future phd cci has been tracking this changes happening in the industry it endeavors to provide the opportunity to the indian industry to remain on top of the changes that are seen to be happening it has been calling uh, speakers from not only national repute but also from the international community to come and guide the indian industry on the advancements taking place today's session on advancement and challenges in the food packaging industry also considers the need to quickly evaluate options in the direction of sustainability i wish you all a happy learning and a very active participation with this i would now like to request dr alam to take it from here dr alam please thank you so much thank you thank you mr pillai uh, mr alam uh, i think let me introduce yourself also to our speakers as well as the attendee and for your information sir as of now we have 723 uh, attendees joined so uh, uh, mr uh, dr tanvir alam uh, is the director of indian institute of packaging uh, his research area is basically food packaging package design sustainable packaging un certification he has published over 100 research and technical papers he has also authored three books on packaging he is the managing editor of journal of packaging technology and research also associated with editor editorial board of process food industry and national fellow of academy of dairy science dr alam please unmute yourself sir
Thank you, Mr. Jeevaraj Pillai. Very good afternoon to all of you, all the speakers, panelists, industry members, and office bearers of the PND Chamber of Commerce. I special thanks and congratulate PSD Chamber of Commerce for organizing timely such important topic advancement in food packaging at to, inter, as an international conference and webinar. Indeed, it is a pleasure being a director of Indian Shooter Packaging. The Indian Shooter Packaging is an autonomous institute under the Ministry of Commerce and Industry and as a pioneer institute. At the outset today, all we aware and agree, the packaging is an integral part to make successful delivery of any food product, including the packed food and food products. With the cut throughout competitive environment, retailers are having a battle to it out to meet the efficient packaging demand for the consumer. This shows packaging and distribution have become more important than packaging earlier. Packaging plays a vital role to present a product in aesthetically good design, helps for prom promoting and branding of a product, and creating a positive attitude towards the product. Producers are well aware of the importance of the packaging how it impact to the sales of its product. Indian food, when we talk about the Indian food packaging industry, it is one of the fastest growing segment. In fact, the Indian packaging industry is more than 35 billion US dollar industry today. And it is estimated that another five to 10 years, it will become a double and it will reach to the 70 billion US dollar business. The food packaging market is rising because of the favorable demographic aspects such as growing urbanization, a rising proportion of middle income group, rising consumer awareness and demand for convenience and processed food. We all have witnessed during the COVID and post COVID and realize the how packaging is imperative and essential for the supply chain money. Even the common man realized the important role and essential role of the packaging for the whole business ecosystem uh, of the food supply chain. There is a sea change in the field of the packaging for consumer manufacturer as well as regulatory point of view. Therefore, innovative packaging become a buzzword, not only to the value addition of the product, but become aggressive tool for marketing and branding of uh, food commodity. It is equally important to increase the shelf life and hygiene image of the product. And especially when we talk about the Indian food packaging industry, there is a huge potential, especially ethnic and traditional food items. India is a country of bio biodiversity. Lot of the food products are available and locally that need to be packed. The packaging is the game changer for especially the pack, uh, traditional ethnic food of the country. The emerging trend in food packaging are result of rising demand for minimally processed food item now these days, changes in retail distribution network, growth of e-commerce and food services are the new chain uh, for the country. Food industries are investing, now these days in novel food technologies like control atmosphere packaging, modified atmosphere packaging, vacuum packaging, intelligent and active packaging, nano packaging material, and antimicrobial packaging. Now the implementation of international regulation on the packaging has become stringent. That is why food products manufacturers are now switching to eco-friendly sustainable packaging materials, considering more safer and secure and sustainable packaging. So therefore I can summarize the, the future growth will run around the three S concept of the food packaging system. 
the packaging should be safe secure and sustainable overall now eco friendly plastic packaging is therefore a suitable choice for manufacturer with good barrier properties for enhancing the better shelf life of the traditional and ethnic food items however for the years bioplastic like pla and pga pga based materials are commercially available for the years but due to the cost it need to be taken care of that if we can make this biodegradable plastic is cost effective there is a huge demand and potential for such a packaging material for the indian food packaging industry at the same time it poses challenges in packaging like excessive packaging difficulty to recycle packaging materials low degree of standardization of the packaging and packages which poses a carbon footprint this need to be addressed when we are talking the solution for the indian packaging uh, food packaging industry the carbon footprint can be reduced through the rigorous research and development in the field, in the field of the packaging by introducing innovative and sustainable packaging materials and design this will help to cost optimization developing packaging specifications sustainable design protective and cushioning packaging material for indian food packaging industry technological de development should focus on investing in emerging upgrading channelizing and accruing the indigenous technology for especially uh, traditional food products investing in packaging equipment that is both innovative and efficient is a crucial part of staying ahead of the competition and achieving packaging which satisfy to the ultimate customer the growth in the packaged food sector will also boost employment increase the revenues from the export and provide better product and services to the customer in the long term by efficient packaging transforming packaging with the ch changing times national research institute like iip in collaboration with the industries focus on indigenous technology development and standardization in the packaging material development of the packaging more sustainable locally available materials as an alternative source of the packaging for food application at last i would like to mention iip has developed several innovative patented packaging materials for especially the traditional food products we are committed to serving the nation by collaborating with national agencies like bis fssi apda mpda and other state government and leading packaging and led industry in the country finally i would i would like to appreciate and thanks to the phd chambers commerce for timely organizing conducting international seminar thank you very much jai hind thank you dr alam thank you so much uh, now i invite uh, mr jean mark dor he is president of packaging vertical of, of medef international and president of gppia france gppia is the group of french equipment manufacturers for food processing and packaging his topic is global trends in french food packaging industry he is specialist and expert for more than 40 years in packaging issues both in terms of all types of packaging and the technology to be implemented to develop from upstream to downstream as well as in terms of machines and production lines process and packaging he is specialist in cooling of tools and means new technologies to be developed to perform uh, equipments he is specialist in development of new media and communication tools aimed at encouraging and promoting the technological know how of french equipment manufacturers both in france and abroad mr jean mark dor please Hello, <clears throat> hello everybody. Uh, I would like to start with uh, thanks, um, Mr. Uh, Real Say. So sorry for the pronunciation. <laughs> Gerard Pillay, <laughs> and uh, all the distinguished speaker from all the country who have participated to this uh, forum. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, dear friends, I can say bonjour because in France we are on the morning. <laughs> 
So in first and foremost, I would like to thank the PhD CCI Chamber of Commerce and Industry and the Ministry of Micro, Small and Medium Enterprise for organizing this webinar and for following the French food packaging industry to exchange with you today on the advancement and challenge in eight sectors. I shall come back later. My mind is to show how much the VA value the economic partnership between our two countries. For that, we are so grateful. I am very delighted as president of Packaging Business Council at Medef International and president of JPA to hear your feedback and innovation in the food packaging sectors and to share with all of you to know how and progress in the fresh player in this industry. I am here today representing to the packaging vertical of agriculture and agro-food cluster of Medef International, who is a French private business network at the international level. It aims at promoting the French know-how abroad through collective action. Medef International supports trade technological cooperation investment and long-term partnership with foreign company and institution. The Agri Agro Cluster gather 200 company on several sites. I'm going to show, to introduce you uh, a PPT. Okay, I think you see, do you have a good say about my screen? Yes, we see it. Okay. So as I tell you, Medef International, it's a, a, a activity to promote the French company, as I tell you, uh, to support every kind of technology cooperation and investment for a long-term partnership. Uh, today, our network is more than 800 French company for all leading sectors, specifically in food industry. Our organization, we have 85 business council. But more specifically, excuse me, oh, okay. <laughs> more specifically, we are on the food field sectors who have more than 200 company organized, and that's our specificity in eight sectors. We shall two liters divide. We provide full kind of solution for upstream and downstream for agriculture and agri-food project. I mean, we can start from the beginning of the product to the end of the product. Next one. Who are our members? We are interested in our company. Major company from the agri-food industry, as I tell you, food processing equipment manufacturer, packaging equipment manufacturer, service consulting engineering training, utility energy and energy. Okay. We support, and is one of our best activity, all the mission to connect French company that we can meet your requirement. We offer a trade-made solution for every kind of specification. Specifically, and I am the president of this field, it's a packaging. We are more than 50 companies. We can resolve every kind of trouble between the production of the product to the end line of the production. And packaging, by the way. Just very quickly show you that we have the same kind of activity for the livestock industry, for the dairy industry and meat industry, where you have, you have um, identified and we work with all the com complete, uh, complete company, we can work together for propose a complete solution. Field crops, bakery industry, fruit vegetal, wine industry. And specifically, we, we, we can't meet you all over the world because we are participating to a lot of exhibition, all international trade exhibition in the world. Specifically for a packaging field, which is one of the meaning of, of the brief today, uh, 
At uh, JPR, we, we are specialized exclusively in the packaging field. And for bet, the, the bet uh, relationship between all the international company, between our company. Just for your mind, because maybe you don't know exactly what is the packaging in France. Know that we are today on the JPR more than 150 company. We go around 9,500 jobs and we export with export. We, we are turnover more than billion so euro. And something used to be interesting for you that you just remember what is always the market. Packaging in Europe is around 180 billion for the production of packaging and cell packaging, and 11, 12 billion for production and export of packaging machinery. Specifically for France, packaging is 35 million, and packaging machinery is more than 5 billion in last years. Yep. Just for your mind, uh, what is the food market in France? You should be interested a lot of companies in, uh, from India, by the way. Actually, you are more than the 7,650 companies. Uh, more of them are, are very small company, And that represents more than 400,000 direct jobs. And by the way, we are the, the fourth place beyond USA, Germany, and Netherlands. Just for your mind, just for give you an idea of the market, because that's very important to know, because we try to develop the special specificity and technology for this kind of market. Most of them, like for a lot of country, you have seen that 67, 65% are represented by the food market. Second one is, is uh, all kinds of industry and uh, is beauty. What is important to know, it's French company is in the top of the five country for the innovation in this sector. That means that we, we spend a lot of time and money to develop and to patent a lot of new technology for the packaging. I mean, uh, for the materials, like for the machinery. And one of speciality, and a lot of you know that it's to adapt it a really specific uh, technology for, for, for your, 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 your now. Just for your mind, it's important to know that we were probably one of the first country in the world to study for the recycling material. And today we are developed more than 68% for, for be sure to, to protect the, our future. And something I tell you at Eco Design, it's mainly committed. It's very, very important for us because that's it's the most view for the future for your for your world. And by the way, we specifically work with some probably a lot of companies that you know because some of that are in India on tour. It's Danone, Lactalis, LVMH. Uh, I, there is so much people. After me, we are talking from technical products, technical material, technical specificities of packaging. Uh, I, I would not want to, to, to be too long, by the way, explain in what kind of material, plastic or by the way, because it was the first with, uh, uh, with, with support uh, and that you know that there's a lot of attack about the plastic bashing. And we tried to find a solution for translate for equipped new packaging field with cartoon, by the way. So we, we are really here for, for expect your, your, for your question and uh, know that you have three possibilities to follow our activity. Uh, we have so our website, we can see and write up about you, about uh, the, two, the, the Twitter and LinkedIn. So I don't want to be too long. So uh, thanks again for, for all what, for this organization and know that we stay at your disposal for any inquiry. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Jane. Thank you so much. Uh, <clears throat>
Uh, there is one question, uh, Mr. Jean, or uh, maybe anyone wants to uh, answer that. Uh, what are the existing and upcoming challenges in food packaging industry? This is uh, uh, the question from Mr. N. Vivekanandan. He is scientist in hydro meteorology division in Central Water and Power Research Station from Pune. So existing and upcoming challenges in the food packaging industry. I'm I'm so I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> no, it's okay. No, no no problem. We'll take this question in the question and answer session at the yes, end of the I, session. Yeah. I think it's easier you you if it's possible to send me the with the chat the question and I can tell you and send you directly a, a complete answer. It should be more more uh, more simple for me by the way okay. <laughs> and, okay. and probably more comprehensible uh, uh, answer. <laughs> Okay, okay, yeah, it's good enough. Huh? Thank you so much. Uh, in fact, I request all of our attendees. Uh, it's uh, uh, about 750 uh, attendees, those who are uh, already joined. So I request uh, you may please uh, post your questions so that we can uh, have it in the chat box. It may be replied by the concerned speaker or maybe anyone they can reply. Alternatively, you can also email to PhD chamber or to me, or people also have my uh, mobile number, they can also WhatsApp to me. If it is not answered now, so I think uh, it will be answered later on by the speakers. We will send to them and seek the answers of the questions. I think uh, 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 that will be good for everyone. And uh, now with this, uh, we'll move to our another keynote speaker from Sri Lanka, uh, Mr. K. Rohan Vijay Singh for his keynote address on global perspective on food packaging. He is chairman of Packworld Private Limited, Twin Packaging Private Limited. He is CMD of Premium Packaging Solutions. He is chairman of Trend Ceylon Private Limited, director of Packaging Development Center and board member of Chiristu Sahanthai Foundation, Sri Lanka. He is also a lecturer and consultant in packaging, flexible packaging. He won Lanka Star, Asia Star, and World Star Awards for Best Innovative Package for Export, Premium Onions and 20 kg Bag for Green Tea Leaves under Transport category, which was completely innovated by him. He won Special Award of Recognition for Creative Packaging, awarded by Ingrin Institute of Graphics for his contribution, winning two World Star Awards in Transport category. Mr. Rohan Vijay Singh, please kindly deliver your keynote address, please. Mr. Rohan. Hello. So, uh, we are a little bit behind the schedule, so I request you to please deliver your keynote yeah, address, please. I, yeah, I, I'm online. I'm online. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. We are able to hear you. Yeah. Can you see me? Uh, no, we are not able to see the video, but we are able to hear you properly. Uh, well, I, I, I have already tried and uh, I don't know why you can't see me. Uh, yeah, can you? Yes, we are able to see you as well. Right, yeah. all right, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, I said it's very nice and good, very good afternoon uh, to ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you for the beautiful introduction. Uh, it's a pleasure to be in this uh, forum and uh, I take it as an honor. So uh, let me, I have uh, the, the topic uh, that I have been given is global perspective on food packaging. So yeah, basically I have touched a uh, few areas and maybe uh, that will be uh, definitely that will contribute uh, to the great listeners. And I do believe uh, that we'll gain something to the uh, global village. But to start with on food packaging industry is currently estimated to be close to being a multi-trillion dollar industry. Improvements, achievements, achieved in the 
economic conditions of many countries considered economically less developed have also contributed to the growth of the industry and basically have contributed to the growth of industry and growth in demand for packaged foods. So when I say that, it clearly shows when it comes to uh, on food packaging, whether it is, uh, whether it is uh, rich or poor, name it, you know, everyone in this global village contributes to the, the packaged foods. So this growth in demand has also led to the adoption of more stringent food packaging standards by the governments to ensure the quality and the safety of the products reaching the consumers. So it's, it's very clearly, it's very uh, clearly says, all the governments, governments have got to be ensure that the quality and the safety of the, when, it, when the package reaches the consumer, very important. Developments in packaging materials, packaging machinery, the package design, etc., to meet ever tightening standards of the marketplace have been very impressive. Behold, the growth of food packaging, which could be considered to be synonymous with the improvement of the quality of packaging, has also made a positive impact of the lifestyles of large urban, urban communities by enabling high quality food products to be made easily accessible to millions of people. It's, it's clearly, it's clearly uh, say, it clearly shows whether, you know, how the packaging has helped the entire lifestyles from top to bottom. Impact on lifestyles of large urban communities by enabling high quality food products, how it has made easily accessible to millions of people of this global village. So anyway, getting back to the topic, food packaging is a multidisciplinary field. The food packaging industry comprises number of important and interdependent sectors that include but not limited to producers of foods as well as packaging. Retailers, consumers, researchers, including designers, etc. The main name of all sectors concerned with packaging is to protect the quality, the freshness, and the safety of food from degradation and contamination until it reaches the consumer. And surprisingly, along with the technology advances made in these sectors, there are also challenges that keep on cropping up, needing further advances to overcome them. Plastics have been used, plastic have been used in packaging for a long time. And the strong global push for green and sustainable production and consumption will force the packaging industry to shift to biodegradable, environmentally friendly packing materials. How this can be achieved experientially will be a major challenge facing the packaging industry. It seems that biodegradable polymers replace less than 5% of plastics at present. So we have a long way to go. So everyone, everyone thinks when, you know, when people started biodegradable, everyone thought that biodegradable by now, it has gone maybe 25% closing, getting closer to 50%. But the, the fact remain, the fact remain that biodegradable polymers in plastics polymers in the range of 5%. So you can just, you can just imagine with the, with the true, the norms. And you can just imagine uh, we have a long, long way to go. Climate change is affecting food production. And this situation is expected to get worse over time. So we have got to be, we have got to be, we have got to be extremely careful. Resulting food shortage could present difficulties in sourcing food for increasing populations. So you know, population, when you take the global village population, you know, with simultaneously, you have got to see. So it's very, very, you know, you have got to be very careful as the food for increasing population, you have got to be 
with the norms. This would tighten, this would heighten the need of reduce food waste and also develop economical, environmentally friendly and sustainable food packaging material to increase self life and safety. As you know, the possible use of nanotechnology in this regard is receiving increased attention. As mentioned earlier, the concept of sustainable packaging is being increasingly stressed. And in this regard, life cycle inventory has been suggested as a suitable guide to evaluate sustainability. As you're probably a LCI's cycle, life cycle inventory can be used to obtain complete details regarding raw materials, sourcing and use, materials and energy consumption in the packaging, wastage, resource consumption, recycling, emissions, etc. The next generation of food packaging should contribute to reducing waste as well as resources, GHG emissions. The use of sustainable or green packaging has a potential to reduce the impact on the environment due to the food packaging through the use of edible or biodegradable materials, plant extracts and nanomaterials. For example, going by the current trends, it is considered possible by 2050, 2050 to produce 50% of the European food packaging material from renewable non-food resources by using food and packaging waste and the balance 50% from oil-based closed-loop recycled materials. These bio-based packaging materials would also be compostable. Okay, saying all this, we get on to there's also increasing importance attached to a better understanding of the contaminants of food packaging. This is connected to research being conducted to improve food packaging. The goal is to define contaminants of food packaging and the identification of contaminants. Residues, especially in the use of recycled material. Quality, cost and productivity have been the major determinants of success in the food packaging industry. To meet these requirements in a fiercely competitive world, the food packaging industry has to constantly focus on the new technologies and practice of waste reduction recycling, et cetera, with the goal of achieving sustainability. To quote Professor, Professor Sarah Rich of University of Michigan. Professor says, she had quoted, she says, new packaging materials must meet criteria for being sustainable without sacrificing the security, freshness, and the visibility of the food inside. So which is very, very important. And we face huge challenge developing new packaging materials that protect food while being recyclable, compostable, produced with renewable energy or even edible. When you take apples, oranges, bananas, nuts, all come in packaging, that is edible and compostable. Nature has set the standards. Nature had set the standard. End of quote. Rising raw material costs, rapid technological challenges, end of life disposal, reduction of greenhouse gases and water. All these have to be successfully confronted. In the opinion of relevant experts among the challenges, facing the food packaging industry, the following are considered the most pressing. Sustainability, product protection, recognition of product distribution, freshness, impression at the point of sale, e-commerce rising costs. As you know, 
nearly 30% of the municipal solid waste is product packaging. Therefore, the focus should be on less materials, less waste, and recycling. There's a growing demand for all packaging to be carbon zero by 2050, 2050. I repeat, there's a growing demand for all packaging to be carbon zero by 2050. With our planet being increasingly overwhelmed by environmental pollutions, organizations should be more mindful of the impact of their packaging on pollutions and climate change. To counter cost increase in the following strategies have been suggested and are being adopted. Omni packaging, reduce packaging, redesign packaging, sustainable packaging. And lightweight, finally lightweight packaging. After drawing attention for so many challenges, before I conclude my short address, let me just mention the existing developments taking place on area of food packaging, namely active packaging. It is hoped that these developments would in the years had give rise to novel innovations and applications, which at the present time could perhaps justifiably and considered to be in the realm of science fiction. According to Professor Rich, active packaging technology might usher in an era where packaging is used to deliver nutrients, flavors, odors, textures, and color in response to environmental conditions, time or consumer interactions. That indeed is something to look forward to. So uh, this is, you know, which I have touched few areas and uh, it's the end of my short speech, but I do believe, you know, the which, which which I have touched in several points of key areas. Anabo will definitely contribute to the great listeners who, is, who are in the global village right now and to the global. Undoubtedly, the fine points, which I got, it was a collective points which I received and made it to a short speech rather than dragging for maybe half an hour or so. When you take it into summary, it relates to the main points. So again, I would like to thank uh, Mr. I forget them, Mr. Shaker. Shaker, I believe. Thank you. So thank you. Yes, thank you. You have been really, really, indeed. It's a pleasure to join you and the and the entire forum, and really appreciate it and take it as an honor. And we'll meet up again. Thank you very much, and may God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Vijay Singh, for your excellent keynote address. You have rightly touched upon several points which are relevant in context of food packaging. Thank you so much. You, My pleasure. You joined us today, despite of your too much busy, busy schedule. You make it a point that we, we were having some confusion also yesterday, but uh, you joined. Yes. So it's yes. wonderful. Thank you so much. Yes. And I, we look forward for your participation again as well. Yeah. Of course. I, I was very keen and I thought, you know, putting all my other appointments, local appointments, and there was one overseas appointment. But why not? You know, yeah. life is, it is not the end of the world and you could adjust yourself. So thank you once again. Thank you. And we we'll look, look, look forward again as well okay. your address. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. In, fact, you. in okay. fact, we will be organizing uh, some, some time in physical format. So right. not only you, but all uh, our esteemed speaker, we would be very happy to host them here in right. India. Well, of uh, course, future. Yes. yeah. Of course, it had been India. Is, it had for me it has home away from home. I have been to India almost last India all exhibition almost more than fifty times to India. And oh, I very love good, wonderful. I wonderful. love the country. So thank you. I'm thank not you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, here, I would like to inform everyone uh, that uh, 
we have very large number of attendees not only from india we also have attendees far away from uk spain okay france mauritius mexico bahrain oman fiji turkey nigeria australia zambia bulgaria papua new guinea south africa uganda bangladesh and uae and maybe many more so these what i could see from the back end my it team just they informed that uh, several other countries they are also in the uh, attendees forum so right that's wonderful for all of us it is all because of the excellent speaker joined us today it is all because of uh, you people are here to join and listen to you it's a pleasure it's a pleasure i should say you know you share your knowledge and you gain something from others way to go yeah thank you so much uh, our next speaker uh, dr torben fisher he is divisional manager cast film in the wind molar and holzer germany torben has studied mechanical engineer and earned his doctorate with a dissertation and the tactical development of alternative plasticizing methods for plastic processing from 2015 to 2019 he was as chief engineer and deputy head at the institute for plastic processing industry and craft since 2019 he is divisional manager cast film at windmoller and holzer kg uh, dr T uh, torwan fisher please uh, he has to uh, uh, address uh, his topic is sustainable cast pp packaging and technology solution for food packaging dr torban please yeah thank you mr sangrai for the kind introduction and first of all let me impress uh, my sincere thanks for the phd cci to to giving a, a german machine producer the, the opportunity to present some of our latest results um, when it comes to sustainable packaging solution from the point of a machine producer so i hope i can share my screen and you will see something please let me know if you can see my slides now let me check if i can see you yes um okay um just double checking if i'm in the right pr presentation because i can't see you anymore but anyway i will go on with my presentation as you already mentioned i will give a short introduction on um new technology solution and some insight on sustainable cast packaging productions and i will start my presentation with some um thoughts on sustainability um yeah to motivate my my topics here um and um you probably will all agree on that um despite the the covid crisis we are in and despite the ukraine crisis we all face right now sustainability is and still will be the main driver for future actions in the plastics industry um and this topic will will um challenge us quite a while from for the next couple of years but when it comes to the to the public discussion on sustainability there are two aspects which are often mixed and played against each other and we make uh, we need to make ourselves aware of that aspects first of all um the discussion on sustainability is always driven by the picture that there is a plastic waste pollution problem um or as i would like to to call it out um we have um wasted pollution uh, oceans or um save save the turtle let's put it easy um and we certainly all agree that plastic is not not good in the new use when we uh, throw it away into the ocean and this is a highly emotional discussion we are facing in the public um but this highly emotion um always transfers into the second discussion we face and this is the climate change debate we are facing and this is preventing to let the ice bears die as i have the picture down here or the uh, prevent to die the planet due to the co2 pollution and when people take the picture of the polluted ocean over to the de debate on the climate change um they are turned against into plastics because they think okay plastic they uh, doesn't help us here and um i just want to make you once more aware of that uh, both aspects the pollution of the oceans and the co2 pollution is uh, are are important discussions we are facing but plastics in particular is not the cause for the problems Uh, um but also part of the solution and we need to use plastic as a package solution to um to face the climate change 
And just to give you one more example where um, sustainable products can be made out of plastics and where it meets the requirements even better than other products or even other materials, is this one picture I, I took out of a study, which just showcases if you want to protect one kilogram of a good, you need to use roughly 1.7, uh, if you want, to, sorry, if you want to, to, um, to use, if you use one kilogram package um, material, you can then prevent damage from 1.7 kilogram product if you use glass or glass jars. Um, so the, um, the, um, the, the percentage um, um, uh, from the package solution material class used to the good you protect is really bad. And if you look at the other end of the scale, if you use pouch product as a package solution, one kilogram pouch can protect up to 65 kilogram of the product. And this makes, from my point of view, very clear that a, a, a plastic package as a package solution is probably one of the most sustainable product we can use to prevent the climate crisis. So what do we have to do if it comes to, to overcome the current challenges for plastics? Um, I put it down to, let's say, most <clears throat> few points we have to do to create even more sustainable products. First, if we are agreed that plastics are a good a package solution, we now need to focus on how can we reduce product production waste or waste in general when it comes to create those solutions. That's the first step we have to do. And if we cannot reduce the product waste anymore, then we need to discuss how can we make our products even better and make them reusable. And this is what I mean when I say, let's try to improve the recyclability of plastics as a material by, for example, given designing new packaging solutions. But if you go these steps, please keep in mind, and this is something the speakers already mentioned beforehand, um, if we go these steps, please do not sacrifice the performance of the package solution you already have, because if your package doesn't work, you do not protect your goods. And if you don't protect your goods, you will end up endangering your goods, which will then create even more solution and will be less sustainable. With this introduction, I would like to go into my further on in my presentation. <clears throat> and these thoughts also define the fields of action we see at Windmüller Hölscher. What can we do to provide the best packaging solution for the future? And these three fields of action um, are as follows. First of all, we um, have the packaging 4.0 solutions here at Windmüller and Hölscher, where we try to integrate processes and data across the different systems and make them available in a one term platform, and this platform is called Ruby, it, which is an IoT platform to bring up all processes and data together. Second, and this is more, um, probably the, the, the most obvious one, try to enhance the efficiency of your production, which means improve the machine usability, reduce the downtimes, improve the startup processes, and enhance the consistency. The more consistent your production process runs, the less waste you create, the more sustainable is your solution in the end. And last but not least, we all need to focus on new sustainable products. So increase the processability of recycled material or even identify new recycling approaches. And in my further presentation, I will try to tickle all of these three points and give an example of what we are doing at Windmüller and Hölscher to improve in these three fields or areas. I would like to start with a basic example of how a new sustainable product could look like. I would then go into what are we doing in the cast film to, to improve the efficiency in our production. And I will end my presentation with one example of the packaging 4.0 solutions. You're probably all aware of the typical setup of a standard pouch or a triplex bond, I would like to call it. Um, this is a typical packaging solution. You can find it for your chips, um, your nuts, ginger, dates, and so on. And this is a quite good product when it comes into good pro uh, goods protection. A typical layout or design of a, um, of a triplex bond is that you have a, a bio pad, which is counter printed. Then you normally have something like an amino foil in between to, to get the shelf life up. <clears throat> and then you have a seeding film to do the seeding. And while this product is doing a great job in keep, keeping your goods protected, it is really bad when it comes into recyclability, because as this laminates cannot be separated for sorted recycling, 
um, you, you cannot reuse it. So you cannot retry it because then you cannot melt it, pet heads, different ceiling temperatures than the PEP solution and so on. So this product, as good as it is when it comes to good protection, it is bad when you're looking into recyclability and we need to think in new solutions how to improve this without sacrificing seeing the functions this product already has. And one of the solutions we can can up is if we replace the PET with a PP film and uh, create an, a different uh, functionality when it comes to improving the shelf life. And this is one of the solutions we came up in the, in the recent years. So this new setup is only a, a two-ply um, <clears throat> pouch. It um, consists of a, a, a BOPP film, which is counterprinted for the labels. And underneath, we have a 60 micron cast film. And this cast film has to be metallized by special processes um, to get us the barrier properties. Um, and test shows that this, this new pouch system is able to be as good as your former um, pouch solutions, but has uh, a quite advantage when it comes to recyclability. Hence, this product is made strictly from pre-P. You can refeed it to your processes. So by doing this clever design, you have a new solution which improves the recyclability drastically when it comes to this new solution. Just let me show you a short picture. We presented this one in the last case show. This is um, made with our partners, Borealis, um, and applied materials, DA, and so on. And we made it to the full PP pouch, which you can say here as a product example, which could be used as a pet replacement for standard pouch solutions. Second topic, efficient production. Um, and uh, this is focused on, on the cast film. Um, you're probably aware or familiar with the situation we are in the cast film in, or this applies to general production processes. Um, all processes in the extrusion are more or less continuous production processes. And its sustainability is defined by two factors. The more efficient production time you have and the more better quality film you get by your production process, the more sustainable is your process. So if you increase the downtimes um, and the film properties are not met during the uptime, we waste resources and therefore are not sustainable. So all we have to do is just find a window to where our processes are stable and then we're done, isn't it? But that's certainly not the case because today we have a new challenge coming in and this is the higher demand for more flexibility. So instead of producing 24 seven, the same material or the same film, um, customers are always asking for different batch, different materials, different size, different orders. And this forces the producer to be flexible and react on these requirements from the market. So what changed is that the changeovers um, have drastically increased. And this is where we try to focus our technology on. What does it mean if you want to change over from one product to the other when you look into the cast film? So um, first of all, you stop the machine, you open the bolt clamps, you take out the decking swords, um, and then you move the deckling if you have a width change to the new wide, and then you reclamp uh, manually the deckling salts. Then normally you restart the machine, and then what happens is that you manually go with the Allen key over the die, and this is uh, approximately 100, 150 bolts on the three meter die, and you manually adjust the melt flow by forking the dies, uh, the, the, the bolts. And then you look where, where does my melt flow? how good is my production quality, and then you iterate yourself until you reach a, a certain level of production output where you say, okay, this is kind of good quality. And even this process takes up to 30 to 40 minutes. And um, because your machine runs into production output, you waste a lot of material during the process. When you reach a certain to sigma level, a quality level, then you're able to switch to automatic die control, and then maybe you need to readjust from die, uh, time to time, um, preventing the, the melt flow to, to, let's say, running out of quality. So normally, even by a skilled operator, this ramp up process takes up to 90 minutes. And during this 90 minutes, you produce, let's say, 80% throughput for a cast line, which is totally wasted material. What can you do to improve the pro <clears throat> this process? And this is where, where the Filmex came up with a new solution where we, where we basically automated the full change of a process. Um, the system at, at Filmex or at Windmill and Hölscher, we call the die control wizard. And this allows us to fully automate the thickness and the width change. 
and any manual interaction with the die um, is um, eliminated. <clears throat> so by doing this, we are way faster in the ramp up process and we uh, make sure that good production quality and consistent film properties are achieved during production. And just to give you a rough idea what this means, where well, we previously took 90 minutes to change this job, the same job can be done by our automated system in 20 minutes. And by that, we are um, saving 70% of the time and especially a lot of scrap generated during the changeover, which then helps us a lot when it comes to sustainability or make the production process more sustainable. Last but not least, let me just give you a uh, short introduction on what could packaging 4.0 solutions help us when it comes into sustainability? And this may be confusing for you because this data shows uh, two graphs. One graph is the mozzarella cheese consumption per head over the year 2000 to 2009. And the black curve shows the uh, numbers of civil engineering doctors awarded in the same time. And there is something which you wouldn't normally think of but there is a correlation between those. So you could say um, the more mozzarella cheese is consumed, the more engineer doctorates are awarded. This is, a, uh, this is a correlation you normally wouldn't come off, but this is where IoT solutions come in. And um, how, how, how does this transfer now to the plastics industry? Um, we at Winter and Tulsa, we created a solution which we call Ruby. And Ruby is a system which collects all the production data and monitors the variety of process variables from all different sources. So for example, the energy consumption of your chiller um, and so on, this all is collected within the system. But it doesn't stop there where we collect the data. Uh, this system tries to figure out correlations between those points and gives you um, um, process limits, which it guess should be good. Um, so the system knows from the history what, what products you have produced, and it looks at the, at the product you're producing right now. And by correlating the, um, uh, the data it already has and the data it sees from the production, it says, look, your extruder is running at this level. Um, and I know the product you are doing. So the limits for this extruder should be between here and here. And right now I see a drop in the extruder. So there is something wrong here. Please go and take a look at the extruder output because there's something you don't see. And by this, we help um, the production and we find new correlations we haven't seen yet because now we see the failure or let's say um, the, the process points where our production process is leaving the set limits we know from, from the past. And by doing this, we continuously learn from our past production and runs for our future production and improve our, improve our quality on the products. And also making sure that the quality of the end product, which is the packaging solution, is in spec. So let me come to my conclusion that of this short introduction. I think um, you're probably um, agreeing that in the sustainable solution, plastics are playing a key role um, when it comes to fighting the climate change. And from our point of view as a machine manufacturer, there are three points we have to tickle. First of all, we all need to work together to find new recycling orientation solutions when it comes to flexible packing solutions. As a key feature for the machine manufacturer, we struggle or we need to, if, um, to enhance our efficient production technology, uh, which help us to simplify the complexity of current production processes, but also reducing startup and production change up time and therefore significantly reducing scrap we produce. And last but not least, packaging 4.0 solutions enable us to identify and eliminate production deviations and their course more quickly. And by constantly comparing all this data, uh, we can identify the points we need to work and, and safely reproduce what we have seen in the past. And with that, I want to conclude my presentation. Thank you all for your attention and hand the words back to the host. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Torvan. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, there is some questions also in chat box, if anyone can answer. So if it is related to Dr. Torvan, if it is related to you or someone else, huh? They may write the answer there itself. Uh, our next topic is uh, emerging trends 
in food packaging industry. For this, I invite Dr. Christoph Litowski. He is technical director, Riffenhauser, Blom Film, Germany. Christoph Litowski has studied mechanical engineer at the RWTH Aachen University, Germany. Afterwards, he joined the Institute of Plastic Processing in Aachen. He started as a scientific engineer and project manager in November 2000. He was head of the injection molding department from June 2005 to March 2008. In April 2008, he joined the former Kiefel Extrusion GmbH, Worms, Germany, where he worked as an assistant to the management. At Riefenhauser Blonde Film, he has been working in the various positions today as a senior product manager. Uh, I invite Dr. Christoph to take it forward from here. So thank you very much for your for your kind um, and introduction. Um, I um, want to welcome everybody to join this wonderful this wonderful session um, on um, um, packaging and the advantages and challenges um, in in our days. And I want to give my insights to to that from the perspective. Um, of a uh, machine builder, what we are as, as right now, and um, um, yeah, um, we'll focus my presentation on uh, the way how we can contribute uh, on closing the loop because that's um, the most um, challenging um, um, task, I think, for the whole industry. Either it comes to, to solutions made of paper, made of aluminium, or made of plastic. And from the from the perspective of the view of the plastics um, industry, um, uh, probably they they they've already um, a very valuable common and insight on that in terms that uh, we really have to work on making plastics products. And this is especially true for plastic products for packaging recyclable. Um, and uh, for creating and enabling recyclability of plastics films in specific, um, our um, yeah, a part as a machine um, builder in this uh, in this game is is uh, providing machine technology which enables um, film producers doing so. And in that sense. Um, I would like to focus on some film product solutions and the related machine technology to that. Um, and there, there will be two examples in my presentation today. Um, the first one is on the replacement of um, BioPET film, um, BioPET replacement in, in, in pouches, uh, typically two um, duplex laminates. And uh, as well, um, triplex laminate made of alufoil um, mainly and uh, BOPP or BOPET and PE. And um, just as pointed out in the, uh, in the, in the wonderful speech of, uh, of, of Tom, uh, the, the problem here with regard to recyclability is the multi material mix in our packaging. Uh, in in our in our day, um, so here yeah, this is the typical setup of the pouch. We have the PE uh, silicon film. We have some adhesive layer, and typically a 12 micron bio pet film, a highly standardized uh, uh, product, giving very good uh, product uh, proper, uh, properties for for sure. Um, but um, in the past, nobody did really care about the question what to do after the, the use of the product, is this product recyclable or not? And this is what is changing in our days, dramatically in our days, we have to ensure that the product is recyclable from request, especially to for um, any kind of uh, packaging for food as well as for other um, examples. And then what well, the good news is, um, the industry found solutions to uh, come up uh, with an alternative for the pet because uh, the 
what we need to do is we need to replace that to a solution what one would call a mono material solution. Um, um, so consisting of um, say the same polymer family because if it is so, the product can be regrinded, uh, made to make the granules again and put into an extruder again. And in that sense, the good news is you can do this with PE. But uh, you have uh, somehow to modify the, the PE. Um, so what you have to do is, um, I cannot use the standard PE. This, this is in, in a property is not similar enough to a BioPack, but if we stretch a PE film like 400, 500, or up to 600% in machine direction, it is changing the PE, is changing its properties. And if it is so, we come up with a film which is in its properties very similar to uh, to BioPet, giving an alternative and ending up in a in a solution, um, allowing us to get rid of the pet in such a part. And this is a very nice example. Uh, one one example from a startup of a, of a machine of a real world uh, product uh, available in our days. Uh, on the internet via Amazon, this this pouch is, is, is uh, covering uh, uh, food for for pets, for dogs, uh, more more specific. And um, we replaced uh, together with our customer here the um, bio pet uh, film, twelve micron by um, uh, twenty three micron PE film, which was stretched. Uh, uh, um, in the, in the inline in the exclusion process at a ratio of 5.5 with a five layer PE structure and is laminated to a 70 micron um, polyethylene film. And by doing so, this pouch is now uh, uh, recyclable. And I would like to give you some insights of the only production uh, chain. Um, so it will run with about 580 kg per, per hour gross output, stretched in machine direction 5.5 times, and the resulting net was um, on the on the winder um, 2.2 meters. Uh, here we stretched the tube to film, and uh, well, the, the challenge with these films is for sure the stretch films the performing in the downstream. And I would like to present to you the performing of the film in the downstream. Uh, um, this is uh, um, the performance on the on the box press at 450 meters, a rotogravure machine uh, with uh, um, eight colors, eight color machine, but six color job here. And um, well, the important thing now um, is is uh, the quality. You see here the, the printed image. And in a short uh, moment, we will see the, the register and how good uh, we need the register and how good the reproducibility of the printing process is uh, within this, uh, this, uh, this job. Again, a zoom on the, on the image. And now we have the left hand side, uh, the, the register, the six colors, one, two, three. Uh, four, five, six on the eight color box uh, printing, the rotogravure machine, a very good repeatability. Let's see how the uh, film is traveling through the machine. We just start at the rewind section and travel now station by station all together um, to the unwind section. You see that the final um, width of this job was somehow uh, somehow smaller than the, than the width of the film, uh, which we produced on our stretch unit. But um, yeah, I think that you can easily imagine that this works with a better fitting, smaller uh, film thickness as, as well. And okay, now this is uh, the, the, the very first station and uh, this short video is closing now with a view on the unwind section and how good and how even without any, um, say, a, a, a fluffy edges or baggy lines uh, in the in the film is um, traveling to the to the press. The film was taken to a not mechanical machine, which was run on max machine speed, three hundred 
meters per minute to do the lamination to 70 micron um, flat uh, PE film and uh, was taken to, uh, to a pouch and making a uh, machine, simple, uh, simple machine, nothing too much sophisticated. Um, and on the pouch making machine, we met exactly the same speed um, like the customer is doing in our days with, uh, with a pet film. So in this, uh, this example may, may show and should show that, uh, yeah, the technology is there to come up with mono material um, solutions. Um, 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 which are recyclable, which can be cut down to, to flux, put to an extruder, make granules out of it, and uh, feed, them, feed them back into um, an extrusion process. Christoph? Yeah? Sorry for interrupting there. Maybe I'm the only one, but I cannot see your slides. I, I, I heard that you're pointing out for something, but I, I cannot see those. So okay. maybe I'm the only one, but uh, uh, I may, may ask the host. Can you see the slide? Thank you, Tom. No, I think maybe you can see it again. So I will share again. Oh yeah, the the film was um, was indeed interrupted. I don't know. I don't know why. Hold on a second, please. Sorry for dropping your presentation. I could follow, yeah. um, but, but I look, I would like to see the pictures as well. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Yeah, good, good input. So I will share it again number two and um i just need to know where you did you lost me that would be important to you know to to jump back um did you were you able to see uh the um uh behavior on the press i will ask the host I didn't see anything. I, 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 yeah. it, it could be my problem. So and okay. this is why I wrote the question. I didn't see okay. anything. Of it. Okay, I, I may repeat with the performance on the um, on the press. Uh, can it be seen now? Ken. Yeah. Ken. Okay. Good. Now, so, um, um, just a quick uh, flyover um, because um, uh, you, you see the 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 the, 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 the film. Of the model material, uh, the, 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 the printing of our stretch film. Um, the ultra stretch film, as I said, 5.5 was the stretch ratio in machine direction. And uh, the important thing is now the behavior of the film in the press and the repeatability of the printing, which, uh, which shall be seen um, right now. Um, in a few seconds here on the left-hand side, um, where you see the repeatability um, here by the register, as I said, a six-color six color job. And uh, uh, you see how good we need uh, the, the register. And, um, and again, um, see how the film is traveling through uh, the press without any fluffy, uh, fluffy edges. Or or any kind of a bigginess in the in the film, which is uh, for sure important to get such a nice uh, nice nice image on the on the film. As uh, Doctor uh, Christoph, we already have time, so so if you can uh, send me uh, your uh, uh, PPT so that I may share it from here. Yeah. Um, I think that's a clear message by the host. I should come to an end of my um, presentation. So we, we, we are basically following time, but we still have a lot of time. <laughs> so yeah. no issue. Huh? Uh, um, so okay. uh, 50 minutes left or um, just yes, a yes. question to the host? Okay, good. Uh, I will do so. Um, um, okay, so um, yeah, there are solutions. Um, and this is what I would like to present and show with you by, by this slide. Um, you can see um, here typical values of bio a pet film and bio PP film. And as you can see, um, say um, with special reference to the E modules that we do not need, especially true for bio pet film, 100% E modules. Um, in the 
machine direction, you like for a stretch in Eastern, we are like in a range of 1,300 to 2,100, whereas Beopet is 5,000 to uh, 4,500. And sorry? And Beopet, uh, like 1,700 to 2,500. So we are quite, quite close with CCD, we, we somehow need it. And um, yeah, um, this. We want to important to understand is not a hundred percent, especially meeting the, the bill pet uh, module, but it is good enough to create standard parameters like we see here on the left hand side in the in the in the in the picture. Um, same is true for Hayes. Hayes is for this kind of stretch um, to Eastern in machine direction, higher compared to PET or BP, but still good enough. To make a nice a nice product out out of it, which is especially true if you think that we will still go after this our values after the fashion process that this will be still be laminated uh, and then we anyhow end up usually with a haze of I don't know six seven um, six or seven percent. Well, um, this was um, some some insights on the solution. Um, of uh, replacing, um, uh, or find a replacement for a duplex uh, laminate, getting rid of the pet film. More exciting is even finding solutions for triplex laminates. Um, triplex laminates um, contain today in our days mainly two, three different kinds of uh, material. This is the PE filling film. This is the metallized pet or even aluminum foil and a bio pet or bio PP film um, at the, as, as, a, as, a, as a top layer. Again, and inside we have some glue and for sure uh, a printing. A nightmare when it comes to recycling because we have uh, most likely aluminum involved, we have polyethylene involved. And we have somehow uh, bio pet or bio uh, Dr. Christoph, sorry to interrupt. I think yeah. uh, uh, still we are not able to see the uh, your presenter. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I don't know what's going wrong. Sorry, gentlemen. That is really exciting. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Um, so um, this is the, the this is showing the, the triplex laminate. Still true what I, what I said so 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 far. Um, nightmare for for recycling. So we have to to find a solution for for that. Um, and we are looking for a mono material solution in a, in a sense where uh, I have no aluminium involved, where the only PE and a safe. A thin barrier function is realized by a technologies like metallizing or alloc or zeox, or maybe even a very thin EVH layer giving some barrier properties. Because that's uh, that's the difference between the duplex and the triplex laminate. The triplex laminate gives me a, a, a barrier um, a barrier function, and this is um, for sure. The challenge if uh, we look at the solutions which which can be um, yeah, which have to be found um, found here and um, um, in that sense I would jump to the next I would skip this slide and would jump to this uh, to this slide um, because this one shows. Um, the beauty of a standard barrier composite, a triplex layer with BioPet, with aluminum, with a ceiling, and with a PE uh, film, which gives very good oxygen and very good water vapor transmission um, um, uh, function rate, very, at a very low level, so a very good barrier. Uh, solution. And unfortunately, if we now compare this with the pouch, which I just showed before, um, containing of a monoaxial oriented PE film uh, and the lamination PE film, we are far away from any kind of barrier function, which is for sure needed for lots of applications. Um, so 
Um, yeah, so the beauty of this one is for sure recyclable. The beauty of this one is the good barrier function, unfortunately not recyclable. So what can we do? Well, we have to bring um, solutions uh, in the game, which are able to provide a barrier. And in a very first step, this could be very simple. Go with your sealant film, with a sealant number two, with a non stretch film, apply an EDH in a say five, seven, or even nine layer film, and go the first step to improve the barrier property regarding oxygen and water vapor transmission rate. This is uh, in, a, in a first step, uh, um, for sure, um, for, for, for some applications already good, good enough, but um, in the end of the day, not, not for all. So what can I do next? We are right working in a, in a project where we metallize the um, sealant film. So we still stay with a barrier. We metallize the sealant film. Uh, why do we do so? Because we want to improve still these uh, these barrier um, values in the in the direction to 0.2 uh, for uh, for the oxygen transmission rate and somewhere well uh, below 0.5 for the water vapor transmission. So obviously um, this will give an improvement. I can't uh, comment today on how much it will improve, but it will improve. Um, but please note so far, so far no changes of the sketch film. We still go with the sketch TV film, but um, we did not touch it. Um, but what we all know is that once I stretch EUH, I will improve the barrier properties um, of, of such a film. And thus, in this, uh, in the next solution, we do exactly that. We take out the EUH out of the sealant film and go with the EUH um, to the, um, to the um, stretch film and see that if we do so, we can improve barrier properties um, compared uh, to the solution where the EUH is in only in the sealant film. See, if we compare these, these values, we see in both cases an improvement. And the main difference is that now the EUH was stretched in the machine direction and giving better, better properties. Whereas I have to say that the, the, the EUH layer was in this case like four microns, and here was two. So smaller EUH layer and even be better, um, better properties. So very promising. Um, approach here. And now I can again start playing with um, metallizing technologies or ALOX and ZEOX technologies to even improve this, um, um, bar this, this barrier properties in a, in a next step. So um, you, you know, you might wonder and say, okay, uh, this guy is talking about monomaterial solution and um, EUH is now coming in the game. Why is this still considered to be a monomaterial solution? Well, um, common understanding in the market is like that um, if you reduce the EUH well below 5%, it is regarded as being recyclable. That's the, that's the important thing that in the total combination, in your, the, the pouch itself is like um, the EUA content is below 5%. So that's, that's the target, either it's in the sealant layer or in the stretch layer. So in that, in that sense, um, we uh, were working on these, these solutions. This is, these are the two films. This is the one which was not metallized. And uh, the second one was a, a metallized film giving nice, Barrier properties, um, um, yeah. And um, with uh, with this, I just would like to close uh, my my presentation because I said it was, I will show product um, examples and I will show uh, the machine technology, which is is in this. And machine technology is a stretching unit. And uh, well, um, if we if you see at the solutions in the market, basically everybody is building a nice. Um, uh, MDO line, uh, these are available in the market. Um, three things are important if you stretch film. The film should be warm, it should be an inline process. The, the 
warmer the film when entering the embryo, the easier it's the stretching. It should be um, and, uh, not cool down too much because if it cools down too much, crystallization is going on um, and stretching becomes more difficult. And um, well, there should be a certain time, and this time should be as long as possible before the film meets the rhino because this positively um, pays on um, annealing time. And the longer the annealing, uh, the lower the shrinkage will be later on, um, which is uh, important for, for the sealing process. Well, in, in that sense, um, Reifmauser came up with, uh, with a solution where the MBO, a fully full scale of MBO with up to 12 rollers, is integrated into your hall of instead of having it somewhere on a conventional position on the first tower, uh, tower platform, or uh, sometimes we see this here on, uh, on the second level as, as well. But early as possible, um, that position is for sure within the top. So here we have a full scale of MBO, um, which uh, would mean if I compare the position from this one to that one, that I need the MBO two times earlier. Um, so the film is warmer, except this is important, it should be as warm as possible when it hits the MBO. The degree of crystallization will be, will be lower. This will positively pay on um, stability of the um, stretching process. Um, and vice versa, if you do the stretching here in the hall of, you have a long time, all the time when the film is traveling down through the winder. Um, so um, you have a long annealing time, long time during the film can have a free cooling, uh, a long annealing time, which will improve the uh, shrinkage and the thing of behavior uh, later on, uh, either on the road or in the in the um, in the converting when the sealing is is done. So um, yeah, when it comes to the MBO uh, position method, and that position is on the uh, is within the within the wall of for such an MBO and the MBO again. As a, as a summarizing and sentence and takeaway for you is the enabler for and the, the, the input of a machine builder for closing closing the loop MBO as an enabler to uh, produce pet replacement firms with and without barrier and with this um, sentence um, I. Uh, would like to close my presentation and apologize for the technical problems with the transformation of with the, um, showing my, my screen, but I hope that you got the you got the idea. We are ready to give solutions. And yeah, thank you very much. And I hand back to the host now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Christoph Lekowski. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm very sorry for initial technical problems. Uh, uh, here I would like to, I think you unshare your screen, please. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the easy one. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, actually, uh, uh, this is uh, the link only for the speaker. Here only uh, we have the speakers. Attendees uh, joining link is different. As I uh, informed earlier, as of now, we have 758 uh, attendees uh, already registered and entry is entered. So their screen is different. It's like that. Huh? So that is yeah. going a little bit one or two minutes behind. Huh? So they can see like this. Huh? Only thing is they can post their questions here, which is not linked to our speaker uh, link. So the, they, they are not able to uh, access to the chat box. Mm -hmm. But anyhow, uh, uh, I will uh, collate the questions and uh, later on we'll take up. Huh? Now we uh, move on to... Sorry. Uh, sorry, I, I was not <laughs> muted. Yeah, Mr. Albert Chicot is our next... Uh, uh, speaker. He is Business Unit Director, Lamination Comexi Group, Spain. 
He has degree in chemical engineering from the University of Barcelona, international master degree in financial management from La Salle University. He has over 20 years of experience in the flexible packaging sector, plastic film printing. Since 2016, he has been the managing director of the Lamination Business Unit at Comexi Group. At Comexi, he has worked in the marketing and product management department, as well as being responsible for lamination sales worldwide. I invite uh, Mr. Albert Chicot. His topic is sustainable solution for food packaging. Mr. Chicot, please. Thank you very much. Yeah. I will share my screen. <clears throat> You see my screen? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, well, this has been said, so I think it's uh, enough talking about me. So let's talk a little bit more about Comexi, who we are. We are a global supplier for flexible packaging in terms of machinery. So we develop printers, laminating and coating machine and slitting. We've been in the sector for over 60 years already in the industry with more than 4,500 machines installed all around the world. So the value chain we're bringing into the market and customers is from the printing, laminating, coating, slitting to almost the finished product. So as I said, we have more than 4,500 installed machines with more than 2,000 clients and we have been selling over a hundred countries uh, worldwide, we have offices in Spain, USA, and Brazil. We have around 470 workers uh, with our turnover of 125 million plus, uh, which we dedicate around 4% in R&D uh, every single year. Very good. So what sustainability is in Comexi? See just a glimpse. We have Lexo EB, Offset EB, have all kinds of different coating methods. So we have a web family excellence. And so customers, the customer, consumers, sorry, consumers, they want to be sustainable. Okay. This is what we all see in, uh, in today's news and media. So that's the flexible packaging sector. If we think about the society and governments around, think about that 500 million tons of plastics are produced annually worldwide. So our objective is to reduce the use of plastic in flexible packaging. Digging some paints and coatings, they account for 52% of worldwide use of solvents. So what we need and our objective is to reduce the use of solvent in flexible packaging. The industry accounts for nearly 52% of world energy consumption, which obviously our objective is to reduce the energy consumption also into the flexible packaging. Can we do that alone? No, of course not. We are not alone in our efforts to reduce this energy consumption, solvents, and plastic amount. So we are belonging to the Ceflex group also and into the recycle project. So we talk about the society, but what about the brand owners? If we have a look on it, we see that all brand owners have developed strategic plans to work our sustainability. Why and how? Reducing plastic usages and reducing VOCs, so volatile organic compounds, and CO2 emissions. Making the packaging recyclable. Reducing recyclable content indoor packaging, reducing the use of virgin content. We see today that's clearly visible in rated packaging, either shampoos or, or even water. Okay. 
increasing the use of paper. That's another thing that which is coming more and more. Making compostable or reusable packaging and reducing the CO2 emissions by changing materials. So P instead of polyester and having more efficient machines. So they bring uh, less energy usage. So we talk about the society, we talk about the brand owners, and what about the converters, which is the main client for, for Comexi. All converters also have developed strategic plans to reduce the use of plastic. Again, using mono materials for easy recyclability, developing better coatings to facilitate the use of monomaterials or paper, and again, promoting the use of it, the use of paper. Uh, we see more and more this is, is an incoming trend. Uh, the, use of, the using of compostable materials as well, reducing, the, again, the VOC emissions by using solverless printing, I need a, either a lamination, water base, curable inks, and again, using more efficient machinery to reduce the CO2 emissions. So all those different things are going into the same trend. So to standardize recyclability or compostability, different materials and trying to minimize the emissions and CO2 emissions as well. And what sustainability means in the world for the OEMs, so machine manufacturers in the end. Obviously, we're focused in helping converters and brand owners achieve their sustainability goals. It couldn't be otherwise. How? Developing better machinery and process from multi-material, which means different films, different nature films, to one material, so one type of film. For multi-structures, so all kinds of different layers, two monostructures, so which would be one layer, probably one, one coating on the top, and improving the production, the production process, solvent-free printing, laminating and coating, and having machinery which is as much as efficient as possible in terms of energy waste and energy consumption. So Comexi contribution to sustainability, how do we understand sustainability? We understand it, of course, as respect for the nature and commitment to work for a better world. That would be the kind of our motto. But again, as a social responsibility towards our employees to have a healthy company and do what we committed with. And that is essential. So when we say something about it, we mean it. We really walk the talk. So how do we work on sustainability? Well, obviously being active members, as I mentioned, of the Cephlex and Recycle initiatives. And being the first flexible packaging company to make a life cycle analysis and environmental product declaration of our machines, which means we know the full consumption of what that machine to be produced and running it has meant for the world in terms of emissions, in terms of energy, in terms of consumption in the end. So the full life cycle analysis. So we apply sustainability, how? For instance, and this is one of our yeah, flags in, uh, in the industry with the offset EB printing machines, which has been the first central drum offset machine that enables sustainable, flexible packaging printing. Comexi presented this, uh, this offset printing back in 2012 as a kind of a entrepreneur. And since then, we've been selling all over the world this technology. Also, there's the Flexo EB printing that we started this project early back in 2006, and we presented in Drupa the first full EB flexographic printing machine. So we combine also the offset or the flex. So we have both technologies in our, in our hands. So we have 
uh, a full understanding how it works. Also with the Flexo water-based printing, which is another fast alternative to get rid of solvents. So all those different uh, printing methods are for the same purpose, to avoid solvents uh, in the printing industry. And with EB coatings and cross-linking to achieve perfect surface results or different film properties, this again is coming more and more, especially if we're going to monolayer films because we print and then we need a surface resistance, the scratch resistance, etc. So EB coatings are, are here for a purpose. Also with solventless lamination, among others. And when we say among others, obviously I'm referring also to water-based lamination, which is coming more and more, especially with the increase of paper lamination and paper coatings. So if we look at this picture, we see that we have all the printing it could be solvent-free way. So offset, flexo, EB, flexo water base, and also the solventless and coatings, they could be, or they can be, and they are also solvent-free. This is something that also we have to prove as Comexi. So we validate our sustainability through the European awards uh, EMAs for eco innovation from our offset, that was the prize that was given. Okay, the EU hour for eco design for the green EB printing technology applied in offset, as I said, in 2017, and also the sustainability excellence award back in 2019. Okay, for the Flexo uh, F2 machine. Okay, so all different weight we have been validating and we've been proving that our technology is really sustainable and is eco-friendly. Just to give you a glimpse, uh, if we go back to the electron beam printing, we see that it facilitates a change from the traditional laminate and the multi-material structures, like for example, for a typical pouch polyester PE, to monomaterial, so all PE structures, either laminated or from printed with a, a overprint varnish. So, and this is the, the figure that is really astonishing. When changing these material structures, the potential savings emissions can be up to 1.7 tons of CO2 equivalent in a single order of 10,000 square meters. So 110 square feet. 110,000. So, what are the main advantages of the electron beam printing? First, inks do not dry, so you don't require a daily cleaning. Inks cure with EB radiation, low migration, there are no photo initiators, so it's food packaging approved. There's a high resistance of those inks and is very low consumption. As we have been saying, there are no solvents. So we provide a clean and safe environment. You don't need any kind of solvent recovery method, no incineration, no distillation, no nothing regarding this uh, solvent treatment. And finally, is also a mature and proven technology. So we have a variety of ink suppliers. So the electron beam printing is something that Comexi has been flagging as the entrepreneur of this uh, technology. And since then we have uh, a full bunch of installations worldwide, you see almost in all part of the world. So you can see all kinds of different installations in America, in Europe, in Asia.
Okay, gentlemen, so that has been all from my side. Uh, I hope it, uh, you enjoy what, uh, what I have been presenting and uh, I will pass word to, to again to the speaker. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Albert. Thank you very much. Um, uh, now I invite uh, our next speaker, Mr. P. N. Siridhar. He is uh, DGM Sustainable Products and Packaging, ITC Limited. Mr. Siridhar is an al alumni of uh, Indian Institute of Packaging. He has been working in the field of marketing packaging material for nearly three decades. He has been in the forefront of promoting the usage of credibly certified papers and paper boards and in creating awareness about the eco-friendliness of paper. He is now in charge of sustainable products and packaging portfolio of the paper boards and specialty paper divisions of ITC. His vision is to develop and deploy paper-based solutions that can replace single-use plastics. Uh, Mr. P. N. Siridhar, please. This topic is sustainable paper for food packaging. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rakesh. Uh, a very good afternoon to all the participants. Uh, Mr. Rakesh, can you allow me to share my screen, please? Yeah, you can share, please. Yeah. Yes. So is my screen visible? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. So the topic is, of course, sustainable paper or board for food packaging. Uh, so let's look at uh, some of the challenges that we are facing today. And what are the consequences of those challenges? It's well known to all of us, but then the key areas are, of course, uh, increasing greenhouse gas emissions, groundwater and air pollution, uh, a mountain of waste, which uh, you know many of us are familiar with, uh, and of course, the threat to marine life, which has also been adequately recorded now. Because of these challenges, we now have a rising consumer awareness and an eco-friendly consciousness. Uh, many of the global brands are taking up bold targets. Uh, civil society activism is also on the rise. The pandemic has also heightened the awareness and focus around the issue of uh, plastic waste, right? Now, this I'm trying to link it to the uh, Sustainable Packaging Development Goals of the UN. So if you look at that, basically the focus is going to be on renewable materials, clean production, renewable energy, optimized materials, performance and cost, effective recovery, and of course, on social responsibility. Now, if you look at the industry, you know, I've just given a very small example of some of the big names in the industry, all of whom have taken some kind of a sustainability commitment, especially focusing on their packaging usage and consumption. Uh, most of these companies have said, uh, set targets for themselves, say by 2025 or by 2030, that there will be 100% packaging would be reusable, recyclable or compostable. Many of them have said they will move away from single-use plastics or reduce the use of virgin plastics by one third, so on and so forth, right? So in all this, how does packaging with paper or paperboard figure, right? Uh, if you had been listening to Mr. Albert Chicote, uh, at least three or four times he referred in his speech also, that slowly there are many substrates which are moving towards paper for its inherent sustainability. So let's look at uh, what is sustainable paper for food packaging? Uh, first, of course, is the raw material. For many years in India, we've been fighting the myth that uh, paper comes from deforestation. It does not. The entire paper industry, of course, depends on sustainably managed uh, plantations. So this is a raw material which is periodically and repetitively available. It's grown in an environment-friendly way. Of course, it's economically viable to the farmers and to downstream industries. And the manufacturing process also the focus has been on uh, renewable energy, uh, reducing consumption, uh, reducing emissions, it was on zero discharge. Uh, the move, of course, has been from many customer demands towards uh, least possible carbon footprint and also on end-of-life disposal. 
Uh, I don't know how many of you are there from India in this. So if you look at the ITC diary, I was just one of the most uh, long-standing diaries and the most sought after diaries today. Uh, this year, the diary was a, a net zero carbon diary is what we have launched. Now, when such a paper is taken and then you give uh, treatments to it and you add a barrier to it, then you will find that this can be made into a sustainable paper for food packaging. Now, let's look at what makes paper uh, safe and secure. Of course, all the regulatory compliance and of course, the process in which the paper is manufactured, which is a BRC uh, certificated packaging. Right? So if you look at India, the FSSA has also been coming up with various norms for food packaging. And as far as paper is concerned for food packaging, the FSSA norm focuses on non-usage of recycled fiber for direct food contact packaging. So predominantly, the industry is moving towards uh, virgin fiber-based papers or paper boards with some kind of a water-based or emission-based coatings, which can provide various barriers and also heat seal or oil and grease resistance. So let's look at what are these emerging opportunities. The current is, of course, secondary packaging is also on plastic laminates of oils. Uh, there are a multitude of products which are on either a pet poly laminate or a poly or a BOPP laminate. And that is moving towards a high strength paper with a heat seal coating. The next is, of course, primary packaging where the challenge is uh, much higher. Uh, here again, from laminates with foils uh, or with other metallized coatings or with pet poly and other combinations, it is moving towards paper, but with functional barriers, which is like oxygen and moisture barrier coatings. The next version is, of course, we are looking at, you know, what is the rigid plastic packaging moving towards a molded fiber packaging, right? So these are the emerging opportunities that we would say is happening as far as uh, paper, paperboard, and also molded fiber is concerned. Now, let's look at the sustainable development goals and how uh, paper performs against each one of these goals. You can see for yourself that paper probably has one of the best performances in comparison to any of the other available uh, packaging substrates. Uh, now, what in addition to these benefits, you're aware that wood pulp you know, can be grown with other crops. So we call this intercropping. We've been practicing this for almost a decade or more than a decade now. And this also adds to rural income, to aids in nitrogen fixing and promotes biodiversity. And of course, uh, all these plantations are, of course, uh, certified to FSE. Therefore, from farm to finished goods, we are able to give a traceability. Now, how does one move towards uh, a sustainable paper package, right? If all these benefits are there, how does one go about achieving this? There is a simple uh, holistic system which is being developed uh, along by CII, along with a lot of industry stakeholders, both from paper manufacturers and converters, where you know this is a type one equal label for paper or paper boat packaging. Type two is nothing but a self declaration. Type three is just a declaration of its environmental impact. But a type one is a type of declaration where it is third party verified. In my opening slide, I spoke about you know carbon neutral or net carbon zero effect. Now this is a model which helps a manufacturer of any converted paper or paper board product measure the entire process and report it in carbon dioxide equivalent emission terms and then take actions to mitigate these effects and to finally say whether the carton that you buy or the book or the product that you buy or even today all those examples of flexible packaging that we looked at whether the final pouch per piece is it net carbon or is it carbon additive or what has it done to the environment this can be arrived at as far as using this CI method is concerned. Now, the uh, choices are real, the consequences are real, and uh, whenever you use a ton of paper, it sequesters almost six metric tons of carbon dioxide, and on rigid packaging, it replaces close to 0.72 metric tons of plastic. It, of course, contributes to the livelihoods of farmers, their native location, and when we shift from flexible laminates or plastic laminates to paper, because paper is inherently collected and there is a value stream downline, uh, the rack pickers and the entire waste processing ecosystem is already paying a value for paper. And we are only adding to that value by giving them an option of collecting even these packaging products which are now made out of paper, right? 
So this is the direction which the vapor industry is now taking, uh, which Mr. Albert Chikwati also pointed out in the previous presentation. And the next speaker from Kohler is going to talk about, is also going to talk about uh, innovations that have been done on paper, uh, both with layer to barrier, which is water barrier, or uh, oxygen barrier, oil and grease barrier solutions, and also for with heat sealability. These are the multiple areas of focus today on paper packaging. And I think this is going to be the future to come in ensuring that we have a sustainable product with us with which we can pack quite a few goods. So that's the end of my presentation. I've kept it short. I'll take questions later whenever the organizers can send me the list of questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Sizzler. Thank you so much. Uh, as uh, we are just... Uh, 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 following the time, but uh, still uh, uh, there's a lot of time. So I think uh, we have a separate question answer session, but still we have few questions. I think uh, uh, before inviting next speaker, I think I may take uh, two, two questions. Huh? One is uh, from Mr. Bama Sidhar Radha Paru. What is sustainable solution available for heat seal laminates? So, uh, if anyone want to answer, it's there in the ch uh, chat box also. Okay, as I was mentioning now, uh, if it is if they are looking at secondary packaging, you know, where there is not a very big demand for uh, an oxygen barrier or a water vapor barrier, uh, definitely for secondary packaging, there are papers with uh, emulsion-based, uh, water-based uh, heat seal lacquer coating, which is available. So that can replace these heat seal laminates. Uh, there are papers which can also work on cold glue or adhesive technologies which can uh, replace these laminates for secondary packaging. And of course, uh, a lot of work is on as far as primary packaging is concerned, but that probably will take a few months for uh, commercial solutions to be available. Okay, thank you. Any Anyone else want to comment on that? And there is another question. Uh, uh, we can make uh, like uh, uh, the recycling is better than biodegradable because uh, we can make another product through recycling. Whereas biodegradable is waste of resources. Anyone want to comment? Yeah, if I may. Uh... I agree. If you look at the typical UN uh, waste hierarchy, uh, the, the topmost is, of course, if something can be reused. Uh, next is recyclability or even upcycling, reuse, recyclability. And uh, uh, composting comes uh, after recyclability. So the solution, if it is, can be made recyclable, but then the key is enabling someone to actually segregate it at the source, at the waste source, uh, collect it separately, send it to suitable recyclers for recycling, then that's the best thing that can happen for circularity. I agree with the questioner that yes, recycling is better, but until the recycling ecosystem is in place, we might probably look at compostable solutions. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyone want to add in this? Anyway, so uh, I invite uh, uh, our Chair from Jammu chapter, uh, he is also in Reliable uh, Plastics. His company is Reliable Plastics. So I invite him, uh, he has some questions. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Rakesh ji. Uh, I, have a, I have some questions from Jammu members too. So uh, these are uh, to Mr. P. N. Sridhar. Mr. Sridhar, what do you think that, what is the future uh, paper or the biodegradable plastic or compostable this is one and second do we have because a lot of people are depending on china machines you know because they are they are uh, very cost effective and production what do you think that do do we have good machines affordable uh, with good production in india too these are two questions thank you okay uh, let me try and uh, answer the first question is it going to be paper or you know biodegradable plastics or uh, compostable plastics? Uh, I would uh, say that it's going to be a, a mix of all three. You know, uh, all the three solutions are going to be there. Uh, 
Uh, I would like to classify it in this manner. It depends on what is the uh, oxygen barrier and the water vapor barrier requirement of the product being packed, right? Uh, if it is a very high requirement of an oxygen barrier and water vapor barrier, let's say less than one or less than 0.1, uh, I'm not sure whether, you know, paper with its barrier coatings has reached there yet, right? But we are working on those areas, okay? So when that happens, uh, then probably you'll find more and more of paper uh, coming into the solution stream. Uh, in order for that to happen, the ecosystem also has to change. You see, plastics has been around for almost 100 years now. So the entire plastic converting machinery, the form fill seal uh, packaging machinery, they're all designed to run thin films at a very, very high efficient uh, manner. Uh, so these have to be suitably modified or even retrofitted uh, to be enabled to be run uh, paper with you know barrier solutions there. So that's also going to take some time. But finally, it is the uh, product requirements, the packed uh, product requirements and regulations and you know what the consumer finally wants to pay for. Uh, that's going to determine which substrate is going to be used for the packaging. Uh, as far as machinery is concerned, this is a classic question. Should I go for a China machine or should I go for a European one, or should I go for Taiwanese or Korean or German? So uh, I'm not qualified to answer that question, but uh, uh, many of our customers have experimented with Chinese machines. And as their business grows and as they graduate, as they move up in the value chain and as their customer starts demanding greater value, uh, superior functionality and superior quality, I've seen them moving away from Chinese machines to more towards say European or even Indian. That's that's my observation. I don't know if I'm correct. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shridhar. Thank you. Over to you, Rakesh ji. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, um, in the pandemic, we have noticed that uh, several industries suffered. But we have noticed that uh, packaging is uh, one industry which has uh, not suffered because the food is in the category of essential commodities. In fact, due to hygiene, uh, the packaging sector grows. So I want that, uh, uh, do, do you agree with me or uh, any, any comments on that? That what was the impact of COVID-19 on the packaging sector as well as the food packaging? Anyone wants to comments or uh, else we move on to our Next speaker. Uh, I don't want to hog the screen, so I'm, I'm waiting for my other eminent speakers to give their comment on this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, maybe so. I I'll move because I I still have time because uh, the scheduled time for Mr. Kistoff is uh, four thirty. Yeah. So I thought that uh, we'll take this opportunity to have some questions in between. Sure. <laughs> so uh, thank you, Mr. Kistoff, for uh, joining and. Uh, Mr. Kistoff uh, is also uh, in the, I think, paper industry. Uh, just a minute. Yes. Uh, just a minute. Let me introduce uh, Mr. Kistoff. Uh, okay. uh, he is a director in Flexible Paper Division, Kohler Paper, Germany. He is having over 30 years of experience. He is working. He, he has uh, been working in the sales business development and GM functions out of Austria, Good Germany, time. Switzerland, with business partners and friends around the world. <laughs> he had privilege to learn about various specialty paper during this time. I invite him to speak on the topic, uh, innovative and sustainable, sustainable packaging for the future. Dr. Christoph, please. I'm starting just one second. Okay. You can see my presentation and you can hear me. Uh, presentation, I am not able to see, but uh, maybe you have to share the presentation. There is some screen is coming, but you have to, I think, uh, you first open the presentation, then share the screen. One second.
So can you see it now? I can only see the folders. Okay, hold on, hold on. Okay, once, once more, sorry. I saw it here. You told me you have some time, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, now you can see it. Yes. Uh, Mr. Fangai, thank you very much uh, for having the opportunity to talk here about barrier coated papers. I have been a bit under stress today that I recognized in the morning that Zoom is not supported by the Kula IT system. So I had to rush home, uh, move all the, the charts and presentations from one co uh, computer. Uh, to my private one. So therefore I'm having it on uh, PDF now, so please apologize, it's not the right structure I'm normally used uh, uh, to, to present. But uh, I think we can, we can jump uh, also with the PDF presentation uh, through. Uh, thanks you, uh, Mr. Srida, the, uh, the presentation before, uh, talking so positively about paper. And I would like here uh, to, to share even more information on, on paper and the uh, uh, possibilities which we have uh, with paper. The current consumers uh, are asking, are there alternatives uh, to plastic? And uh, again, there would be a film behind which I'm not starting maybe to jeopardize the, the, the system. Uh, but uh, the answer I can uh, provide is yes, uh, there are solutions already, maybe not for everything, not to replace uh, uh, plastic in total, but to, uh, to have a pretty good uh, solutions. If you allow me in, in a nutshell, just some information about our group, which is traditionally going back to 1807, a family uh, company with about uh, 2,500 uh, employees. Um, we are producing uh, on nine paper machine and four production locations. Uh, in Germany, and in total, it's a, a turnover of about uh, 800 uh, million euros. Many of you might have touched our papers uh, before, especially when they went uh, into a shop and uh, they got uh, the check, the bill. Uh, uh, this is uh, Köhler thermal, uh, thermal paper or carbon loss paper, or maybe recycled paper, but also sublimation uh, uh, paper, Beverage coaster, when you had a drink, you were enjoying that. And most likely the table you are sitting on has a deco paper of, of Köhler. If you are fond of uh, playing cards, by the way, uh, Köhler is one of the biggest uh, in this industry in the production of, of playing cards. So uh, for everyone, uh, something. Yeah? Uh, it was really entrepreneurship of the owner of Mr. Fuller uh, to invest in the year 2019, 300 million euro uh, in Kiel, that is about uh, four, five kilometers away from Strasbourg on the French side, uh, Kiel on the German side, just with focus on uh, paper replacing a plastic and flexible packaging. Uh, this, for me, this is uh, a really great entrepreneur at this stage. When people, you remember, people were talking a lot uh, about replacing uh, plastic, but not really uh, doing uh, or taking steps. We have analyzed the market in, in various surveys, and there is definitely a demand of the customer. Uh, we rated it by 90% uh, uh, for more products with uh, without plastic. Uh, and 90% Okay. I sorry I was I thought you had a question. Yes, and 90% would like to see more activities from the retailers uh, to offer more sustainable packaging. Uh, yes, and 78% are in the opinion uh, to avoid plastic if other so uh, suitable solutions are available. For us at Köhler, uh, 
we see uh, the, the necessities uh, for sustainable flexible packaging in various points. But for us, we defined three key points. The first one is mentioned before was recyclability. We see the fiber as a, a very important uh, uh, product, which can be reused several times. Uh, there are uh, comments of six to 10 or 13 times. We also, our target is, our long-term focus is a reduction of the base paper and the amount of coating while maintaining the physical and barrier properties. In other words, we want to make the paper lighter. Uh, and the third aspect is uh, uh, we want uh, the functional uh, surfaces, ideally, and at the end of the journey, it will be like that, uh, of biosourced material. This is the target behind of, of our strategy. And I needless to say here, and even to support this activity to paper, is uh, that uh, obviously all big uh, uh, companies are in the focus either to increase in recycle uh, content in packaging or also uh, to increase uh, in reusable, recyclable, compostable uh, packaging. Um, you, you know these figures mainly from, uh, from other charts as well. One aspect uh, we should never forget uh, when working with converters and uh, brand owners. At the end, the, uh, I'm uh, in the right column of this chart, the cost, the total cost of ownership must be within a certain limit. Uh, we can develop papers, uh, uh, outstanding papers, uh, sophisticated papers, but if it uh, can't cover the cost structure, the requested, uh, we have a huge problem. The second one is the machine performance. A paper has to run on the machine, a minimum as good as uh, plastics. And if you have seen our uh, the Syntagon stand, for example, on the uh, Fachpark exhibition, when the people switched from film to our paper to a, a heat sealable paper without adjusting the machine uh, 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 in, a, in a certain way, they put uh, the uh, film off, put the paper on, and the machine was running in the same speed as with the film before. Then, of course, sustainability. Uh, uh, the topic here is recyclability. And the last point, of course, uh, the functionality. Uh, the barrier paper has to function, has to give uh, the security uh, to the product. Our journey of innovation and it is actually happening already. Uh, we started like many, many others with the C1S or uh, the uncoated MG papers. And then our first uh, lighthouse projects have already, already been these next plus products, which you can see here. You find already a secondary packaging of Rittersport on the market, or if you go into any duty free area, you find it. You find the nuts wrapped uh, uh, in uh, uh, a paper. I'm coming to the type of paper later on. And you find the sugar st sticks of Südzucker already wrapped. And on the right side, the tomorrow many, many more uh, challenges and, and way, ways to go. It has been defined already in, in previous speech, so I'm not uh, stressing that too much. But at the end, we have to cover the following barriers. Uh, we have to cover the aroma barrier, the grease barrier, the heat sealability, the moisture more barrier, the oxygen barrier, the, the UV protection vapor barrier at the end. Frankly speaking, we are also not there in all, uh, in all aspects, uh, but today we can offer already pretty nice uh, solutions with our uh, range of uh, Next Plus products. I'm starting uh, here uh, uh, and, and just showing on the right side the modular concept. At the, uh, at the upper side, the printing side, we apply the print coating to improve the, uh, the printability. On the reverse side of the paper, uh, we are applying a, a certain uh, properties uh, which we are requesting. Once again, all our papers are 100% recyclable, certified of virgin uh, uh, fiber, and give an optimum on protection, and are available, of course, in different grammages. The first one I would like to touch uh, is uh, a heat sealable paper. 
which is already a very, um, very good and efficient on the, on the market uh, uh, with the top he uh, heat sealing performance. Again, virgin fiber and again, great running properties. I have looked uh, into the, uh, the product range of the supermarket here nearby. And when you see on the left side, Kit, uh, Kit uh, Kat or Puitone, uh, th these are products uh, which have actually are low hanging fruits uh, to change uh, pretty fast uh, from film to paper. All what I'm telling here about recyclability and food compact is of course uh, certified. Uh, for example, recyclability, we are talking about BTS or Aticelka in, in Italy, uh, who have given us uh, the certification uh, for this product. <laughs> when I talked about the model up, uh, 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 stage, uh, uh, we have then the uh, next one, the heat seal product with a coating on it, with the, the coating to improve the printability. Again, 100% uh, recyclable virgin fiber. Uh, and I, I chose the product like the Fusilli or the uh, caramel biscuits, which can be changed uh, to this uh, seal coat uh, actually right, right away. After the seal uh, uh, or heat seal products, we were also touching the mineral oil bar uh, barrier with our next plus seal MOP. Here again, base paper, a pre-coating and then uh, the sealing uh, together with uh, a mineral oil barrier. All, uh, by the way, all uh, these products are of course uh, suitable for direct uh, food contact, um, uh, sorry, for direct food contact. I've chosen here also uh, two products which I thought are also uh, pretty fast uh, to transform into paper, uh, like the Pasmati rice or the uh, Volcom muesli. Uh, the, um, it's measured actually with the hexan test is uh, smaller uh, 20 GSM per square meter. The kit value of this paper is about uh, 12. And again, uh, uh, the recyclability is confirmed uh, by Aticelka as well as the, uh, the DOC for the food contact. A big challenge uh, for the future, or uh, already a big challenge uh, for us, was uh, the next plus advanced. Because here we are talking about a, a barrier paper with an oxygen, a grease, and a mineral oil barrier for various applications. One key market for that is the chocolate. And if you should be traveling in, in Europe uh, or in Germany, uh, and you go to a Ritter Sport store, uh, you will find there already chocolate wrapped in um, Köhler paper. I've given here some more examples for that, like the Alpenmilch uh, chocolate or the, the chocolate Riegel. Uh, the OTR, you see the measures on the right side and I'm sharing uh, uh, with Mr. Sangrai later the presentation, so here you can uh, see the values in, in detail. And again, uh, certified by the ISEGA um, uh, Institute for, uh, for food contact. Where we are heavily working on is Next Plus Performance, and uh, this might be presented on the market uh, end of the year. Uh, with some uh, customers, we are doing already the tests. It's a heat sealable paper with a vapor, grease, and mineral oil barrier. Uh, it's, from my point of view, well suited for packaging dry and powdered food and non food goods. And you uh, I've seen, I've taken here other examples from the uh, shopping mall nearby. Uh, for example, Next Plus Performance would uh, fit well for pudding or soup, or even uh, for uh, packaging uh, uh, coffee pads. Important, uh, I'm sure a lot of you look on the WVTR value. The WVTR value is uh, uh, smaller 20 on tropical uh, conditions. 
let me uh, share with you uh, the importance uh, for us on resources and sustainability. Uh, we are heavily taking a, a, a focus on a certified uh, uh, sustain, uh, sustainable forestry. Uh, for example, the Forest Stewardship Council certification um, and take just uh, uh, as much wood uh, as uh, it's going back uh, to, to the forest. By the way, I've just read recently that Europe uh, is taking or is, is getting annually much, much more wood uh, than actually taking out of the forest. Um, our goal is also until 2030 uh, to generate uh, energy from renewable sources. And we are pretty good on, on this way, uh, especially the paper machine number eight in kale is, is running with uh, biomass and, and, and gives an excellent uh, uh, footprint, uh, uh, excellent footprint uh, results. Uh, needless to say that um, uh, Köhler is ISO 22,035. It is important for us uh, uh, to support the circular economy. And uh, our sister company is using also uh, uh, um, uh, post-consumer waste uh, for producing um, uh, rigid boards, uh, colored rigid boards, so uh, that we keep the fiber as long in the loop as possible. As I mentioned before, we see the, fi uh, the fiber itself it's a very valuable uh, production, uh, production uh, a means of production. Last but not least, yeah, for us is uh, paper is uh, storing uh, uh, renewable CO2. Paper fibers can be recycled multiple times, six to 13 times about. And of course, the uh, uh, plastic leakage, leakage is a, it's a huge, huge problem, and uh, we want to work against that. Uh, by the way, uh, no halogenated uh, polymers are, are used in, in our uh, coatings. It is a, a journey, and uh, uh, we have gone already a big way. Uh, fortunately, many, many brand owners are now looking into uh, the topic of paper. Converters are supporting us at the end uh, uh, to provide the right papers uh, to the to the brand owners. And yeah, whenever you or the auditorium feels comfortable and, and wants to look into a change, uh, uh, there are papers avail available for this uh, change. That's the end of the presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Christoph Watcher. Thank you very much. Uh, in fact, um, uh, we have noticed that the plastic is one of the main raw materials used for food packaging. And plastic packaging is made from synthetic polymers like polypropylene and polyethylene and manufactured from natural resources. But uh, in some of the cases, we've seen that uh, there is a shifting of uh, uh, transition from plastic to paper flexible packaging because yeah. plastic provides significant benefits of barrier functionality, delivering resistance to gases, moisture, light, and aroma. But we are needed for like certain packaging, such as confectionaries, paper is more suitable. And brands uh, are more uh, keen to use paper because it is more appropriate in terms of environmental controls which we have noticed. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you, Christoph. And uh, now I invite over another speaker for safe and sustainable food packaging inks, Dr. Lars Haske. His topic is safe and sustainable food packaging inks. He is uh, business development uh, in flexible packaging in Hoover Group, Deutschland, Germany. After studying organic chemistry at Hamburg University, Dr. Lars held different technical positions at a converter producing papers and films 
for cigarette industry. In 2005, he moved to Hoover Group as head of technical service Plexo and Gravure Printing, focusing on the development of solvent-based packaging inks. Since 2018, he has been business development manager, flexible packaging, now mainly concentrating on technical projects with key accounts, customers, with a major focus on sustainability. Dr. Lars, over to you, please. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much for the kind introduction. So I will now try to share my screen. So may I have a brief feedback if it's working? Yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, okay, perfect. So thank you very much for the invitation to join this uh, webinar today to share some insights about uh, um, inks and their relation to safe and sustainable food packaging. Um, basically, first of all, let me introduce you to our um, range of Gecko inks. Gecko is our brand name for all of, ink, of the inks and coatings um, that we market for flexible packaging, be it for paper and or for, for plastic packaging with a major focus, however, on plastic. The inks are solvent-based and dedicated for flexo and gravure printing. The concept of uh, our gecko inks is mainly based on uh, three pillars. So one is that we have the same quality, the same formulation approach globally, no matter whether you source the ink in Europe or in Asia, in India, it is the same formulation concept. Um, the, the overall concept is modular, so therefore we can offer a wide uh, range of formulations with a limited number, with a lean number of components. And of course, we have food packaging compliance and are totally, totally, totally free. Um, the modular concept and the food packaging compliance, I would like to highlight a little bit more in detail. Um, so modular concept means that the uh, majority of our uh, gecko inks is based on nitrocellulose binder. So we grind the pigments that give the color, of course, in the nitrocellulose and uh, create gecko base color concentrates. And by combining them with uh, system additives, we can uh, cover the specific, um, the specific application and uh, make sure that the ink performs in the way it is meant to be, be it in surface printing or in lamination. But there are also certain applications that we cannot cover with nitrocellulose, mainly applications that involve higher temperatures like sterilization. And here we have specialist grades of inks based on different binder systems. These are ready-made inks on the one hand based on vinyl, uh, PVC dedicated for gravure, and our latest generation inks, Gecko Platinum, based on a pure polyurethane binder, having the same performance as the PVC inks, but without chlorine, which you will see later on has a major impact also on sustainability. Food packaging compliance means, and as we are a European company headquartered in Europe, we have a strong European focus but not exclusively as you will see later on. So all of the inks that we sell under the brand name of Gecko comply with the European Union food packaging legislation and also with the Swiss ordinance, which is non EU, but has become a standard for food packaging inks in Europe. They also comply with the requirements of the European Printing Inks Association. So our industry association for European uh, ink manufacturers, which is basically the extract or the distillation of the legal requirements in the EU into ink requirements. And last but not least, we also comply with specific, specific brand owner requirements like Nestle. And this is true on a global basis. So no matter if you buy the ink in Europe or from one of our plants in India, it's the same concept and the same compliance uh, criteria that we comply with. And when I say global footprint, this is the representation of our major production sites. So you see, we have a strong focus in, uh, in Europe. Our headquarter is in the south of Germany. Uh, our mother plant for uh, Europe, solvent-based ink is in Italy. Then also we have some major production in, uh, in Selle close to Hanover where, where I am based. And then we have mixing stations around the world um, and last but not least, 
Outside Europe, our only major production site is based in India, about 150, 200 kilometers uh, south of Mumbai. But of course, food packaging compliance, legal compliance or brand owner compliance is just the basis for being able to make food packaging ink. We have to go beyond, we have to go into more uh, sustainability, into enabling more sustainable, flexible packaging. And this will now cover the major part of uh, my presentation. So first of all, uh, in, in, in the past, we as an industry in flexible packaging have faced on the use, have focused on the use phase of the packaging. So on the performance of the packaging as a food packaging material. And we have achieved great things in terms of performance and also in terms of reducing um, uh, the packaging amount by going ever more lightweight or by reducing the thickness of the foam. But over the last couple of years, we have learned that we also must look what, what is the fate, what happens to the packaging after the use phase. So think about end of life uh, scenarios. And here recycling comes into play as a major factor, but also compostability and renewable resources. And for us, of course, as an ink supplier, it is key to understand what will be the ink and what can we, what is the contribution we can make from our side to have a more holistic or a more balanced, flexible packaging design, taking into consideration performance as a food packaging material and also performance in terms of sustainability in the after use phase. And we started our journey by getting cradle to cradle certification. So I don't know if you are familiar with the cradle to cradle concept. Uh, from our perspective, it is the most comprehensive certification that you can get for sustainability performance. Why? Because on the one hand, it combines aspects of product sustainability with aspects of the sustainable uh, performance of your company as a whole. Uh, and therefore it follows a holistic concept, whereas other certifications are rather more product oriented. And Cradle to Cradle has different fields that you need to comply with, and it all starts with material health. Material health assesses and makes sure uh, that your product, in this case, our inks are not toxic to the environment because every other sustainability as aspects would not make sense if our inks were toxic to the environment. Then it is about material re reutilization, which is recycling, about renewable energy, carbon footprint, and how far do you use energy from fossil sources or renewable energy. It's about social code of conduct and about water handling, water stewardship. So this provides the fundamental framework where we base, uh, uh, upon which we base our more specific sustainability activities. And just to explain a little bit more in detail that uh, food packaging safety and environmental safety is not, not necessarily the same, but rather two sides of the same metal, metal, I would like to explain a little bit more in detail. So food safety is complying, complying with the requirements for food packaging during the use phase. Whereas material health refers to human toxicity and to toxicity to the environment after the packaging has been used. So even in the unlikely event that the pack, the printed pack ends up in the environment, the inks are not toxic to the environment. And rather than having just only special formulations targeted at uh, cradle to cradle compliance, you can see here that we have certified a wide range of ink systems. We started the journey in offset printing, which is more targeted at paper. And then in uh, autumn last year, we achieved the full certification for our solvent-based inks, gecko, and also for our water-based inks. For the offset, we have already uh, achieved the certification also for our Indian sites, uh, and we are now ready to roll it out to the solvent-based inks in India as well. At the moment, this is only valid for Italy. Um, and again, providing, so we have the wide portfolio of certified inks, uh, providing a brief overview, not to go too much into details, just showing you that we have a, a major range of our ink series certified according to cradle to cradle, be it for paper printing, be it for film printing, be it for lamination or surface printing, and also a significant range of pigments, which is basically 7C gamut, 
plus some uh, pigments with uh, extended fastness properties targeted both at gravure and flexographic printing. And um, based on this framework of a, a certain level of sustainability performance, uh, we have started a journey to evaluate what we can do more specifically from, from the ink side to support sustainable packaging, or more specifically uh, to uh, support recycling of printed packaging. Uh, of course, we cannot do that alone. So if we, we've teamed up with other partners along the uh, packaging value chain um, to understand the impact of the ink on mechanical recycling, which is the industrially implemented recycling technology today in many countries. Um, and um, the major project that we have been running now for about two years um, teams up players along a circular packaging value chain and around mono materials based on polyolefins, polypropylene and polyethylene. So here you find uh, machine manufacturers, mainly from Austria and from Germany, film manufacturers. Irima is one of the world market leaders in uh, recycling machinery. Um, and we have some further cooperations, of course, with converters who produced uh, printed films uh, for us. And uh, very important also SQTS, an independent lab uh, who helped us with the analytical uh, assessment of uh, recycled quality. And to understand what we have done, a brief look at uh, printing ink composition, just in a nutshell, we are looking at solvent-based inks of course, they have uh, a lot of solvent and after the printing is done, the solvent is gone and then we are left mainly with two components, the pigment giving the color uh, and the binder, which makes sure that we can anchor the pigment to the printed film. And um, we have to understand that during the recycling process, which is basically an extrusion process, um, the printed packaging has to survive temperatures for, uh, around 240 uh, to 250 degrees Celsius, so very high, at least in, in ink chemistry terms. This is a very high temperature, and we need to understand what really happens with the ink when it um, has to suffer these high temperatures. And this is exactly what we have done. So we started with uh, polyethylene and polypropylene printed only with white. Uh, because the titanium dioxide pigment in the white is, is, is stable, it is even stable at 1000 degrees Celsius, so the recycling process is not, not a challenge for the pigment. And we checked um, the three major binders that we thought are interesting for our industry. Of course, the nitrocellulose, because it accounts for the majority of the printing inks that we find in Europe for flexible film printing, uh, the polyurethane, uh, inks and also polyvinyl butyrol PVB inks because uh, these two are more heat resistant than the nitrosolomos. And then we put it into uh, an ARIMA recycling machine where basically the printed film is shredded, um, uh, melted, and then extruded uh, to form some kind of spaghetti. And the spaghetti is sliced into a granulate and the granulate can then be used to produce new plastic materials, new plastic films or other uh, plastic materials. Um, and with the nitrocellulose, we found that we get this type of regranulate. So it is dark brown, uh, is a strong change in the, in, in the shade because the binder decomposes. It breaks down into smaller particles and these undergo follow-up reactions that result in this type of shade. Um, and we do not only have the change in, in, in the hue, we also have a strong odor related to the regranulate. And also um, we find a high amount of volatile byproducts. So there's really the machine was smoking and fuming. It was not really nice to watch that and to smell that as well. Um, with the PVB inks, uh, PVB white is, it was already much, much better. So we only have a slight change of the color. So you can see here that it's getting a little bit more yellowish than, than the starting material, uh, but no odor and no volatiles. Um, and the best performance we achieved with the polyurethane based inks, we have no volatiles, uh, no odor, and, the, and we have a clean white shade. So no change from, uh, in terms of the color. Uh, coming from any kind of side reactions of the binder. 
And based on these positive results for the polyurethane-based inks, uh, we made some further investigation. So what can we do uh, with, with this type of regranulate? Uh, so um, the uh, printed poly or the recyclate coming from the printed polypropylene, um, we converted into cast film in the, in the lab facility at, at, at Brückner and did some lab stretching to create biaxially oriented uh, polypropylene. This is quite a critical process, critical with respect to the quality of the, of the starting material, because whenever you have some inhomogeneities, then during the stretching, the film will break. Um, and we were able to uh, successfully convert the regranulate into a, the biaxially oriented film with excellent uh, stretchability, even with a high amount of, of recyclate and film properties that are almost uh, the same as virgin as for virgin material. And what has proven true for the polypropylene also worked out very nicely with the uh, with the polyethylene. So in the technical facility of uh, of Constantia, uh, we were able to convert the uh, polyethylene regranulate into a blown film and to further convert that into a pouch again with excellent properties with respect to um, organoleptics, odor, um, and uh, to, the, to the shade and to the overall uh, processability. Yeah, and, and encouraged by these findings with a white printed film, we had we continued our journey and had a look at a, at a real packaging case uh, like you find it in many supermarkets. So we selected a crisp bag together with, with, with uh, our cycle um, a project for uh, generating data to improve sortability of packaging waste. And uh, this is a setup, of course, based on a monomaterial polypropylene uh, met, uh, laminated against metallized polypropylene with a Lamination adhesive recommended for recyclability, stand 2K adhesive, specially selected, um, and using polyurethane printing inks, uh, four color set plus white. And uh, we put that into the recycling process. And again, we had very favorable results, no volatile, no odor. Um, of course, the shade that we get uh, is, is a mixture of the four color set um, and uh, also we did a migration test uh, of the regranulate and found very favorable results. Um, to have a more visual representation of these excellent results, you find here the, uh, the uh, result of the recycling for the single material. So this is the virgin BOPP. Of course, we get, no surprise, a, a transparent recyclate. But also we use materials printed with yellow and with red only because these pigments are more sensitive to high temperatures than, for instance, a black, a white, or a blue. But again, uh, the shade is almost the same as for the starting materials. So the color is, uh, is, is stable. From the metallized material, virgin metallized film, we get the gray regranulate. And this is the overall packaging construction. So this crisp bag we get a green recyclate, which is constant color, but of course a mixture of the shades that we have in this print design. And um, so again, very encouraging results. Uh, and we now, this is work in progress. We now want to look what we can do with the recyclate. Uh, going back into food packaging is, is not our target at the moment, because at least in Europe, there are high hurdles from the legal side. Uh, if you want to use recyclates in food packaging. So we are rather looking at high value non-food applications like cosmetic sector, uh, personal care uh, sector to have a look at pouches or closures for the tubes or things like that. Yeah, but we have heard today from other speakers that it is not only about sustainability, that we do not only need to consider uh, sustainability, but also need to consider uh, the performance of the packaging, because if the shelf life of the food is not appropriate and the food decays, uh, then this is not sustainable at all. And uh, traditionally, we have a wide range of different films. 
And unfortunately, the polyolefins only like polypropylene or polyethylene only have poor oxygen uh, barrier properties. So therefore, today, usually other films are used like polyester or polyamide, which have better oxygen barrier properties, or we have some specialist coatings in organic, organic coat coatings, or even aluminum layers um, to have very high oxygen barrier properties. And you see here the demands for certain type of foodstuff with the um, polyolefins. We can only cover the basic requirements like, like dry food stuff, but anything else that you find in this table is not possible with, with standard um, polyolefin packaging. Um, and uh, like, like Köhler, we have also uh, looked on the film side, how can we, can we improve the barrier properties, mainly focusing here on the oxygen barrier properties. Um, and we have developed a water-based um, uh, oxygen barrier lacquer which we combine with a solvent-based primer um, to have optimum wet wetting properties and to avoid any, any, any pinholes. And when we put that inside a laminate without printing ink, then we get single digit oxygen transfer rates. Combined with printing, we are a little bit higher. And of course, this depends on how much you apply. So whether you work in flexo, this is more or less the flexo figures because our partner uh, from the industrial side, from the converting side, with whom we develop this, uh, this, this system is a flexo printer. Um, if you apply more in your viewer, if you combine, for instance, also with metallized films, then you get even in the range of, of, of below one, uh, oxygen transfer below one. So at least we can cover here the medium um, complexity requirements heading for the more demanding application with our system. Um, so I've mentioned the oxygen barrier already, but we have also other barrier solutions. Uh, we have a water-based uh, barrier coating um, against liquid water and grease to enhance the water and the grease resistance of paper and board. So you can have the solution ready-made from uh, paper suppliers or as a converter, you can do it on your own, work with your favorite uh, grade of paper and uh, enhance the water and the grease barrier by a coating. And last but not least, we also have a UV barrier targeted at film applications. It is a solvent-based solution, uh, so it can uh, enable a transparent packaging, so you see what you get, but at the same time, it provides protection against UV light. Yeah, and last, I also want to mention biodegradability and compostability. To be honest, in Europe, the focus is mainly on recycling uh, and uh, compostability is only considered for certain applications, um, but we have a full range of ink systems, um, solvent-based and also water-based um, that are certified for industrial composting according to this European standard and also certified against uh, for OK Compost Home, which refers to compostability in your uh, garden compost heap. Um, so in, in, in conclusion, reaching the end of my presentation, our gecko inks, all of our gecko inks and coatings are food packaging compliant if printed on the outside, not for direct food content. And this is true on a global basis. And they also enable sustainable and circular food packaging solution. On the one hand, uh, because they are not toxic for the environment, uh, they are produced uh, according to a sustainable production process as certified within our cradle to cradle certification. Um, our polyurethane based inks, gecko platinum, available in Europe as well as in India, uh, they are compatible with mechanical recycling process and um, enable high recyclate quality without additional process steps that, um, that are targeted at removing the ink. Um, and we support packaging performance of recycling, designed for recycling, um, uh, friendly monomaterials on the one hand, supporting the trend towards paper, extending the range of applications for paper uh, with the water and the grease barrier, um, and supporting the range of application and the performance of polyolefins um, with our oxygen barrier and our UV barrier solutions. So that's all from my side. I 
thank you very much again for the opportunity to speak to you today and for listening to me. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Dr. Lars. Thank you very much for excellent presentation. You have touched a very relevant points. Here, I would also like to mention that uh, uh, several packaging companies, they use uh, various types of pigments, printing inks, packaging material to make food packaging more attractive. But time and again, it is found that uh, some substances are toxic and presenting a health risk ranging from uh, simple mild hypersensitivity reaction to an anaphylactic process or even a lethal reaction. Therefore, uh, in India, we have a BIS, Bureau of Indian Standard. I think uh, we have a speaker, Mr. Sagar Singh. He will also uh, be the part of uh, framing the standards in India. So, uh, yes. BIS has recently uh, revised uh, standards of printing ink for food packaging in India. It recommends exclusion of several pigments, dyes, solvents, plasticizers, and other compounds from printing ink formulations. These standards was formulated with a view to assist the manufacturers of printing inks to produce inks which are intended for use on food packages and which do not contain any hazardous chemicals that may get transferred to the food inside the packet and help food packets and manufacturer of packages in selecting proper quality printing ink. I think there are a lot of changes and uh, we'll see uh, that uh, we'll have a uh, sustainable and uh, chemical free uh, food packages in future. So thank you, Dr. Uh, Lars Hanske. Now we move on to our next speaker, uh, the Dr. Jorg Peter Langhammer. He is head of global PSR plus sustainability at Siegwerk Drug Farben Asian Company, Germany. He is food chemist, and holds a PhD degree in chemistry from the University of Bonn, Germany. He joined Siegwerk in 89, 1989. During his professional career within Siegwerk, he assumed responsibilities for product safety, environment affairs, engineering and maintenance, occupational, plant and fire safety issues, as well as for management system. In his current position, with Siegwerk, he holds a worldwide responsibility for product safety issues as well as sustainability activities. Since more than 30 years, he is representing the ink industry's interest across the packaging chain and is in regular contact with relevant legislators on the global level. I invite Dr. George Peter Langhammer. His topic is printing ink for safe and sustainable food packaging. Dr. George, please. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you for having me and giving me the opportunity to speak about uh, printing inks for safe food packaging. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Thank you for joining. Um, let me try to share um, um, my screen. Um, hopefully it works and I need to have a signal if it works. Does it work, Mr. Chair? Yes, you please share it. Yeah, I it do. Will work, yeah. No, it, it is works? not yet. No, it is not oh. yet shared. Yeah, ah, please. Because it's it tells me it's blocked. I'm sorry. No, no, no. You please try. Now try. it's yeah. Now it's coming. Yeah. Now it's now it's coming. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so without yeah. further ado, uh, let's start right away, and uh, talking about um, uh, safe inks. Um, so. Um, well, my first uh, slide um, makes a very important uh, statement. Of course, food packaging safety is a must have. Yeah? It's absolutely a must have. And when talking about um, packaging safety, there are three facts uh, to consider, three facts which are important. One fact is that um, regulation is following scandals. Food safety scandals in the past uh, definitely triggered increasingly tight oh, okay. regulations across the regions. And that is to be uh, borne in mind. And, uh, and as we have just heard from you, Mr. Chairman, um, that is also the case here in India. Um, the second fact is um, that there is a, a migration risk. Uh, migration, uh, as we talk, is the transfer of substances from the food packaging or from the print into the packed foodstuff. So that's what we understand by migration. And uh, 
Yeah, and I, we have just to say that migration issues uh, in the past uh, have uh, yeah, frequently been overseen. Uh, also the risk, which is the same associated with this migration of uh, substances into the food has been uh, underestimated. Um, and uh, we know, uh, uh, of course, the uh, many uh, discussions, yeah, but the print is print on the outside. It's not in direct contact with food where uh, can it migrate or there is a pouch uh, where the food is packed uh, inside a carton box where is migration. So I can tell you that is an imminent risk. Um, we have various, um, uh, various risks from migration, even from gas phase transfer. So, so please be aware um, and, um, and uh, we have really uh, to uh, put a focus on that. And, um, and then there's another fact. Uh, once an issue goes uh, public uh, uh, quickly, uh, uh, then, then, then there's a big problem. Then there's a big discussion. Many authorities worldwide have implemented rapid alert systems for food issues. Um, and um, um, these are regularly screened. Uh, and once uh, 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 something, a scandal uh, gets public, uh, then uh, of course uh, the problem starts. And uh, in order to illustrate that, uh, this is what we have to talk about. We have to talk about brand damage. Yeah? Uh, it is absolutely clear for the brand owners that it really takes years to build the trust in the brand and fidelity in the brand and in the products. But uh, it is simply a matter of fact that it only takes seconds uh, to destroy that trust. And that's uh, unfortunately um, uh, what we have seen. So we are not talking um, uh, in theory uh, when we say that. We have seen um, that uh, these uh, food scandals uh, took place in the past. Uh, we had the noodle scandal in India in 2015. Yes, it was not really related to food contact materials, but nevertheless, the less it had a huge impact on food safety. Uh, we know that there was this uh, alleged contamination uh, with lead, but it led to the brand reputation, uh, um, uh, damage of brand reputation. Um, uh, the brand uh, was under scrutiny by the government uh, or governments and NGOs for several months. Uh, there was no production. Uh, the noodle market itself shrunk to 50%, really high amount of costs involved, and the entire supply chain was really impacted. So, so that, I think, is a very good illustration uh, into um, uh, what I said earlier on. Uh, that it's really uh, very important to avoid these cases. And of course, we uh, as an ink manufacturer uh, have to uh, also um, uh, make our, uh, our uh, contributions to this that these things are not happening. Um, yeah, um, I talked about um, this, um, uh, these, these scandals be, be triggering also uh, uh, regulations and legislation. Um, and there is a global trend. I can tell you there's a global trend. There's a higher awareness of consumers uh, around the globe. Um, and, uh, and that leads to the packaging safety norms, uh, which are evolving. Um, Mr. Chair, you uh, um, mentioned already the activities of the Indian FSSAI uh, in coordination, cooperation with the Bureau of Indian Standards. Um, and indeed, um, uh, that le led to the... Uh, yeah, republication or uh, amendment of the Indian standard IS 5945, um, where uh, a committee uh, within um, this uh, Bureau of Indian Standards um, uh, had reviewed um, um, all the relevant uh, constituent chemicals and ink formulations and their impact on foodstuff, uh, where they really took also into account their toxicological profile, the hazards into the environment and the health of people, yeah, and uh, where they concluded um, on certain bands like toluene, uh, the phthalates, the titanium acetyl acetonate, I can definitely tell you I participated to this committee and it was really high level discussions and um, yeah, and, um, and that, that is really um, a very good example how, how these uh, general awareness uh, and how these, uh, how these scandals are triggering uh, uh, new and tight uh, regulations. 
Um, now, um, talking coming from the regulatory part um, into um, the practical considerations, uh, how to ensure compliance along the supply chain. The, the packaging supply chain is quite complicated and um, it, um, complex. Um, and uh, yeah, and um, I think with this slide, I would like to illustrate um, that there is a yeah, there is a responsibilities uh, which have to be shared. Um, uh, there is not only one partner in the supply chain uh, who has to bear uh, 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 all uh, responsibilities in the end. Uh, it can only work, uh, the compliance can only work if everybody uh, cooperates with everybody. If there is uh, information flowing up and down the chain, relevant information, it is a joint effort. And as you can see, in the end, uh, of course, it's the brand owners, it's the brands who are bringing uh, the packed food on the market, so they would uh, stand in the spotlight, but they have to rely uh, on their supply chain, which is the converters and nonetheless also us as ink manufacturers. And everybody has uh, uh, to take uh, his uh, share, starting with the packaging specifications made by the food industry. Then, of course, the packaging conception, which is put together by the converter. Then the converter says, okay, the package needs to be printed. Please, ink manufacturer, you have to develop an appropriate ink and supply this ink. We as an ink manufacturer, of course, have the obligation also to advise um, how uh, this ink needs to be used, which ink can uh, be used for the respective case in order to uh, be non-compliant. Then there will have to be a process validation also by the converter because the converter is not only using ink, they're using substrates, they are using adhesives, all together has to be uh, uh, put in, in a com complex and a complete um, uh, risk assessment. And then this information has to be shared with the food industry, with the converter. So message being um, is a joint effort. Um, and we, as ink manufacturer, we as Siegberg, we have to contribute our bit. It's very important. Uh, and if that would fail, um, uh, the whole compliance of a print packaging would fail. So uh, having said that, um, there is, uh, I think, one very important uh, topic, and that is transparency. Um, sharing transparent uh, information uh, within the supply chain is uh, absolutely uh, vital. Um, and, um, and this is just an example uh, how we at Siegberg um, are sharing uh, this information uh, within the supply chain with the converters. Um, this is uh, our product safety guidance. This is what we call statement of composition. And it is basically an information on the migrants, the migrants which are present um, in the ink and which could uh, migrate into foodstuff and which need to be, uh, uh, which need to be controlled. Um, for that, um, we have this uh, detailed format here, um, which we share uh, with our um, uh, customers, with the converters, which enable uh, the converters to make safe use, uh, which also uh, enables the converter uh, to do a worst case calculation to evaluate potential migration risks, and which also enables the converter uh, to put together an appropriate declaration of conformity for the printed package to the brand owner. And if you take a look, a more deeper look uh, on, on this statement, you will see there is really detailed substance information. There's a very uh, a clear identification of the substance by the chemical abstract number. Uh, there's even an indication of uh, existing um, uh, uh, limits, uh, whether it's an overall migration limit of 60 milligram per kilogram or whether it's more specific, which is uh, taken here in this case, a uh, restriction uh, uh, indicating, for example, for, for this uh, VHD here for three uh, milligrams per kilogram. But there's also an indication uh, about the amount of those migrants in the dry ink film and the result of a worst case calculation as opposed uh, to this specific migration limit so, so that everybody can see, well, if, if my uh, packaging conception um, matches um, the, um, let's say, the, the, the worst case calculation uh, uh, basic data, then I'm fine. If not, I probably better need to have a further look. And furthermore, uh, that is uh, what I also want to stress, 
Here you see in this um, statement, not only the use of what we call intentionally added substances, which is highest, but you also see here uh, the uh, non-intentionally added substances, which we call nias, um, which could be present, yeah, which, which also could migrate. So, so it's all about full transparency, um, only with full transparency, with assessing 100% of the ingredients uh, of an ink, uh, we would match with our objective uh, of full uh, conformity and really full safety of these inks. Uh, so that's really very important. Um, now, um, uh, transparency is one aspect, yeah, but safe products um, uh, by, uh, by, um, uh, yeah, by, by formulation, um, uh, uh, and by nature, this is the other aspect. Um, and, uh, and here, of course, I would like to uh, focus on, on the topic of uh, Zeekberg inks in India being 100% toluene free. Uh, so we were an entrepreneur on the Indian market. We were the first ink manufacturer to introduce these uh, toluene free inks on the market. Um, and we all know that uh, toluene is a substance with hazardous properties. Um, uh, there is also um, uh, uh, the, the, the issue of, uh, of um, uh, let's say, harmful effects on, on workers when, when converting toluene-based inks. So there would have to be personal protective equipment in order to ensure occupational safety. Toluene can have a severe impact on the environment, on human health. Um, it has a bad image uh, uh, for the NGOs. Uh, and the big brand owners generally prefer toluene free inks anyhow. So we have to decide as the first uh, ink uh, company in India to decide completely to go uh, toluene free for our food packaging inks. Um, and uh, of course, we are doing this also on a worldwide uh, scale. So, so that's a, a very clear example uh, where um, you um, uh, have, uh, let's say, uh, a safe. Uh, safety by design and by conception of the ink. We, know, we do not stop there. Um, just recently, um, we continued on our path, on our on uncompromised uh, commitment uh, to product safety um, while introducing 100% mineral oil-free ink series in India uh, with our Vega series. The launch was just recently, you see here, some of the headlines, um, uh, which uh, which could uh, be shown in um, in the uh, respective uh, press and trade press, um, and you see here our um, our head of Asia, our um, uh, um, uh, manager, our our regional manager of India, Ashish Pradhan, who uh, uh, has of course been a big driver uh, for this. And, uh, and we can definitely uh, confirm that we will continue on this path. And uh, the mineral oils uh, uh, is another good example. Why is that? Because in the mineral oils, we could have um, uh, aromatic components, uh, carcinogenic aromatic components, amongst others, which are um, uh, of, um, of uh, relevance uh, to consumer uh, safety. And, um, and of course, uh, better uh, to, to uh, produce products without those in order to really um, add to this safety levels of inks than, uh, than, um, than using uh, those mineral oil-based inks. Uh, this is uh, a story of the past, yeah? very clear. So um, yeah, transparency, as I said, um, is key and uh, transparency um, uh, is um, uh, uh, a topic uh, under which all uh, Zeekwax inks are supplied uh, to our customers. Therefore, we have created a transparency label. Well, you may say it's just a label. Well, everybody can create a label. No, but it's not just a label. I can definitely tell you there are uh, important elements which are standing behind this. Um, and as you can see here on this slide, on the right, in the boxes on the right, um, this is really walking the talk. It all starts with the raw material introduction process, which is, which is a very um, um, important process in our company. It's the basis uh, uh, for, uh, or let's say it's the entry stage uh, for all new raw materials in, into our inks. This is um, 
This is a, a global process, a corporate process. It's only, it's been done in my department um, uh, with, uh, within the raw material stewardship team. And here, when we're talking about food packaging inks, we are insisting on 100% disclosure um, of uh, the raw materials. This is uh, also including what uh, I mentioned already before, the non-intentionally added substances at trace level. Yeah, this is very important. Um, and, um, and if um, these raw materials are not matching uh, these criteria, they will never become a raw material uh, in, our, uh, in our inks, in our inks for food packaging. Furthermore, um, uh, due to the uh, legislation existing and to the restrictions, the migration limits, we have uh, imposed uh, to our formulators globally a so-called formulation guideline. You can take it as a, as a kind of cooking recipe yeah, uh, for, for each formulator where, uh, and we've even automated this process where everybody um, is restricted in his formulation efforts to, um, to, 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 to keep uh, certain uh, limitations in order to, um, uh, in the end, to ensure the 100% com uh, compliance um, of our food packaging inks and uh, non-exceedance of uh, uh, migration limits existing. Of course, uh, good manufacturing practice um, are a no-brainer. We have to we have to uh, we have to manufacture our inks under the uh, good manufacturing practices. Um, that's for sure. I already introduced to to the information via the statement of composition, but there is further information which has to be uh, uh, addressed in the technical data sheet, uh, where we we give specific advice how to use uh, certain ink systems and uh, how to process these. Uh, and furthermore, there is also, uh, uh, of course, ad additional customer support and training. It's not just uh, uh, providing the inks. No, it's also customer support uh, and training. And here, a good example would be um, here uh, our ink safety portal. This is to be found on our public website uh, for each and everybody uh, with a simple registration process. Feel feel invited to check it out, go on our website, check out uh, on the ink safety portal here. We are uh, constantly updating um, relevant information um, and uh, uh, information which, uh, which is very specific uh, and, uh, and can be taken as a good uh, uh, training um, on, 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 on topics like risk assessments, toxicological risk assessments, but also uh, um, as uh, uh, the uh, uh, speaker before uh, told me, uh, told, uh, told you um, on, on the uh, circularity topics, uh, food safety and circularity, which is an important topic. So please check out, find out, feel welcome. Uh, and with that, um, I would like to uh, close my short presentation. And thank you very much for your attention. Uh, thank you, Dr. Jok. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, I think uh, there are some questions in the chat box related to ink. So um, uh, one is, uh, can you suggest the food grade ink? Just a minute. Uh, yeah, it's uh, a food grade ink. What uh, so that means uh, an ink which in food grade ink in in my uh, understanding would be an ink which um, which uh, would be able uh, to be used uh, in direct food contact uh, as opposed to indirect food contact, which would mean printed on the outside or sandwich print. Yes, um, th this is principally possible. Yes. Yeah. So that is basically for. Uh, Food grade ink, uh, ink for printing on vegetable parchment paper in which butter will be packed in direct contact to butter. Uh, so, say, so, so this is, um, I, um, <laughs> I only got it partially, but, um, but I, I would say uh, in the end, um, uh, uh, um, I, I um, uh, look, we are a formulator. So, so if, if the interested uh, uh, participant um, uh, would pass on a, a requirement um, uh, to us, uh, we can, of course, deal with that one-to-one -one and individually. In principle, I can definitely tell you, yes, we are differentiating between indirect food contact and direct food contact. 
Um, and, uh, and we would certainly uh, also understand uh, what uh, conditions uh, would apply for direct food contact. So, so um, I propose probably a, a one-to-one -one in order to find out more. Okay, so thank you. So uh, this is the question from Bhavika Lamba. We will uh, share your details so that uh, she, she can be mm -hmm. in direct contact with you. Now we move on to our next speaker from Bureau of Indian Standards, uh, Mr. Sagar Singh. He is uh, basically instrumental in India for revision of IS 15945. He is member secretary, CSD, Chemical Department, Bureau of Indian Standard. Mr. Sagar Singh is scientist, C, and deputy director in the Chemical Department of Bureau of Indian Standard. He has done his B.Tech in Chemical Engineering from IIT Delhi. He is the member secretary of Printing Inks, Stationery, and Allied Products Textile Committee, CSD 14, which deals with various Indian standards on stationery items and printing inks, including IS. 15495 printing inks for food packaging, which was recently revised in 2020. Mr. Sagar Singh, please, over to you. Uh, thank you so much uh, <clears throat> for conducting this uh, uh, conference on food packaging industry, the challenges and advancements. Uh, let me share my screen. Yeah, can you uh, can you see the screen? Yes. Yeah. So uh, so basically today uh, uh, I will uh, be going one through. One second. Uh, let, me let me interrupt you. I think those who are not speaking may please uh, uh, switch on their uh, switch off their audio. There's some voices are coming. Please continue. Yeah. Thank you. So, uh, Bureau of Indian Standards is basically the one of the important, uh, you know, uh, stakeholder and a regulator in, you know, in ensuring uh, that printing inks uh, meant for food packaging should be safe. So, we are basically uh, involved in formulating as well as revising the Indian standard on printing inks meant for food packaging, which is IS 15495. Uh, as you are all aware that uh, it was recently revised in 2020. Uh, the last version of the standard was published in uh, 2004. So uh, it took us uh, around uh, 15 to 16 years to uh, get this standard revised in line with the industry requirements. So um, I will just quickly go through uh, my presentation. So basically the purpose uh, of this is to raise the bar on packaging safety. Uh, compliance to packaging ink Safety norms is a legal obligation. Uh, legal responsibility of safe packaging material lies with the food business operator. Uh, food grade packaging material uh, should not endanger human health. Uh, there should be no change in product composition and no change in uh, organoleptic properties. So uh, I will, uh, in my uh, coming slides, uh, I will uh, let you know the changes that we have made in the Indian standard. So basically this standard prescribes guidelines. So it is a guideline standard. So basically there are three types of uh, uh, standards. There is product standard, there is method of test standard, and there is a guideline standard. So this is, this is basically a guideline standard for printing inks meant for food packages. So for external packaging and disposables, um, <clears throat> there should not be any toxic substances. And uh, these should comply to exclusion list. In our standard, we have an exclusion list called as Annex A, which contains a list of chemicals which are prohibited from use uh, in the uh, printing inks. And there is uh, also requirement of heavy metals, which should be complied uh, in the manufacturing of printing inks. Immediate food uh, wrappings uh, should be uh, non-toxic, should comply to exclusion list, Annex A, no bleeding of dyes and pigments, heavy metals compliance, Avoid set off in printing process, uh, manufacture to limit migration. Again, uh, they should not endanger human health. There should not be any deterioration in quality and no organoleptic changes. Now, this is a brief uh, summary of uh, the Indian standard uh, as a regulator. Uh, this standard was first published in 2004. The purpose of formulating that standard was to assist the manufacturers of printing inks to produce inks 
which are intended for use on food packages and which do not contain any hazardous chemicals that may get transferred to the food packages and help food packers and manufacturers of packages in selecting proper quality of printing ink. General guidelines for exclusion of certain substances from printing ink formulations intended for use on food packages have also been prescribed in this standard. Uh, in Bureau of Indian Standards, we have a dedicated sectional committee uh, known as CSG 14 uh, responsible for the uh, development or the revision of this standard. So that technical committee comprising of uh, uh, expert members in various uh, domains, uh, I'm sure uh, many of uh, the participants, many of the uh, speakers today, they are a member of uh, our sectional committee. So that committee uh, reviewed that standard in view of the overall impact of constituent chemicals of the ink formulation, considering their reported toxicological profile, uh, hazardous to environment and health of human being and possible contamination of food product uh, while food products are being packed in the printing packages. So the committee, uh, the technical committee decided to revise the standard by incorporating prohibition of toluene under solvents category, uh, thalates under plasticizers category, and titanium acetyl acetonate under various compounds category. In the uh, Annex A, which is the exclusion, uh, uh, an excerpt of exclusion list on the basis of the hazards to health and environment. Further, uh, the sum of concentration levels of uh, heavy elements like lead, cadmium, mercury, and chromium-6 was also kept at 100 ppm for printing inks, meant for food packaging. The packaging should be designed with the restrictions of printing in mind. For example, printing should not occur in areas which by folding come into contact with food. It is important that the substrate itself should not cause taint and order of the packaged product. Traces of impurities coming from the raw materials in printing inks are unavoidable as these raw materials are produced under commercial industrial conditions. The ink manufacturers should make every effort with the supply chain to ensure that impurities are kept at minimum level. The printing ink manufacturers shall inform the converters and point buyers on suitability of ink type towards packages of food and norms followed in formulation whenever there is such need. Uh, MSDS would also be declared by the ink manufacturers. The responsibility of the printer and converter is to ensure that food packages are manufactured and stored in such a manner by which all preventable transfer of material from the ink or coating to the food contents is avoided, even if such transfer is unobjectionable on the grounds of health, order and flavor. The storage environment should be free from potential volatile contaminants, which could have adversely affect the organoleptic characteristics of the food. So this is uh, Annex A, which is the exclusion, uh, which contains exclusive uh, chemicals, which should be prohibited from use in the printing inks meant for food packaging. Uh, I hope you are able to see the uh, list of chemicals. So here we have uh, A3, is the solvents category. Uh, these are the chemicals. So recently we uh, included toluene, uh, you can see A3.9, toluene was included in this list of solvents category. We have A4 plasticizers category, so various chemicals are listed here. So uh, this is not, uh, you know, uh, this standard is uh, kept on changing. This is not uh, a static standard, this is dynamic. So based on the industrial requirements, based on the needs of the industry, we need to uh, update this standard. So this is a dynamic standard. Now, uh, in the present scenario, uh, as I told, we have the technical committee working uh, towards the uh, revision of this standard. So we recently conducted a technical committee meeting on 8th, uh, 8th of February, 18th of February, 2022. And uh, the committee was, uh, had discussion, uh, you know, a very uh, intense discussion about uh, non-intentional added substances, as rightly said by our, my uh, previous, speaker, previous speaker as well. So the committee is considering the possibility of including uh, cobalt carboxylates as well as mineral oils in the Annex A category. Also, uh, the committee is discussing on the possibility of including chemicals related to UV curable inks or coatings. 
further uh, it is worth mentioning that uh, there is no indian standard on eco friendly and biodegradable printing inks as of now so the committee is also working on preparing a working draft document on uh, on this uh, subject so that we have a version of indian standard on eco friendly as well as biodegradable printing inks so which can, which are meant for food packaging so um, the committee is working uh, you know take making all efforts to uh, make uh, changes in the standard so that uh, we are in line with the industry requirements uh, so this was the brief uh, from uh, my side any questions would be appreciated thank you yeah thank you uh i think there is some question in the chat box huh? just a minute there is one question addressed to mr siridhar uh mr siridhar is here yeah so um, uh is 9845 that you showed as compliant with your paper board is not applicable for paper board but for plastic is it correct mr siridhar are you there anyway so uh, there is some question in the chat box so i may read it out what are recent developments in similar family polymers packaging developments like all pe films with high barrier anyone wants to comment on that and there is another recycling is, is i think this is already answered and what is the sustainable solution available for heat seal laminates anyway most of the questions are not question in fact the suggestions and uh, seeking more information so maybe uh, uh, separately i will collate them and forward it to respective speakers thank you so much uh, mr sagar singh thank you very much and uh, now we come to the end of uh, this session it is very very informative and uh, at uh, this uh, conference getting a attendance of over 750 it's a big achievement ha huh? so uh, subject is uh, so relevant for the people not only from india but from uh, several other part of uh, uh, world also joined this session so that is good tomorrow also we have a session so uh, the link is already shared with all the attendees and Uh, i invite all of them to join tomorrow also with this i request chair uh, jammu chapter uh, mr rahul sai to please propose a vote of thanks sure sure rakesh ji uh, so <clears throat> good evening friends uh, it is my privilege to listen to the eminent speakers i must say that today's focused deliberations on achievement and challenges in the food packaging industry is extremely informative to all of us it is an excellent session with you all it is indeed a very informative that gave a, gave all of us an opportunity to listen to eminent speak, international speakers those who have joined from france sri lanka germany spain and expert indian speakers too the today's session gave us desired knowledge on new trends innovations that are taking place globally in the food packaging today our speakers spoke on global trends in food packaging industry 
sustainable solutions for food packaging, sustainable paper for food packaging, packaging and packaging ink standards, etc. Tomorrow will be uh, we have uh, we will have speakers from Japan, South Korea, and Spain besides Indian experts. Tomorrow our speakers will mostly deliberate upon the emerging trends in food packaging machinery and equipments, global technologies, good logistics, active and intelligent packaging, printing ink for safe and sustainable food packaging, as well as common support to MSMEs for modernizing and capacity building. On behalf of PhD CCI and National Committee on Packaging, I convey my sincere thanks to Ministry of MSME, Government of India, Indian Institute of Packaging and other industry partners. I'm thankful to our speakers at the today's session. Dr. Tanveer Alam, Director, Indian Institute of Packaging. Mr. Rohan, President, Sri Lanka Institute of Packaging. Mr. Jean Mark Dor, President, Packaging, Vertical, MEDF International and President, GPPIA France. Mr. Sagar Singh, Member Secretary, CHD Chemical Department, Bureau of Indian Standards, Government of India. Mr. Christoph Watcher, Director, Flexible Packaging, Paper Division, Polar Paper, Germany. Mr. Albert, uh, Business Unit, Director, Lamination, Mexico Group, Spain. Mr. P. N. Sridhar, BGM, Sustainable Products and Packaging, ITC Limited. Dr. Tobin Fisher, Divisional Manager, Carsten, Windmuller and Hosher, KG, Germany. Dr. Christoph, Technical Director, Refn Hauser, Blown Film, GmbH, Germany. Dr. Lars Hanke, Business Development, Flexible Packaging, Hubbard Group, Houston, GmbH, Germany. Dr. Joek Peter, Head of Global PSR, Sustainability, uh, Seedwork, Drug Fabin, AGN Pro, KGA, Germany. Mr. Jeevaraj Pile, Co Chair, PhD CCI, Packaging Committee, and Joint President, Packaging and New Product Development of New Flex I also thank our members, delegates, from being part of, for being part of uh, the summit. I'm sure that the session is fruitful for all of us. It is. With these words, I would request you all to accept my word of thanks with accommodation, and I wish you all good health and safety. Friends, before I conclude, my thanks to all for joining us today. Looking forward to your participation tomorrow. I invite all the attendees to join tomorrow for more interesting sessions with our expert speakers. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, there is one question addressed to Rahul, uh, addressed to uh, Sagar Singh. Um, please uh, let us know that BIS, whether batch printing inks should also be toluene free. Uh, definitely, sir. It's a good suggestion and well taken. Uh, we are going to include this in our agenda of the next uh, committee meeting of CSD 14. So as per the committee this year, uh, we will take it forward, sir, definitely. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much once again. And uh, this is uh, now end of the session. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.